Hello, everyone. It's Gray. Hello, it's Crystal. And this is Bystation Beauty's Supernatural Commentary Podcast, where I, someone who has seen this show several times. And I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. For today's episode, we will be discussing Season 4, Episode 21, when the Levy breaks, yep. written by Sarah. Oh my god, this is a Sarah Gamble episode. Yeah, I mean, she does a lot Singer. of the, the big Sam ones, right? Yeah. I still think yeah. about that one, that one interview, whatever. Like, oh, Jensen yeah. was asked, like, do, do you think the characters belong to the writers or the actors? Which is a crazy question, by the mm-hmm. way. <laughs> and he said, Sarah Gamble thinks Sam is hers. <laughs> Well, well, um, well, she and I just exactly like each other, except for the everything exactly. else. <laughs> Didn't she have that quote about how she thinks that there's like, like a straight guy inside of her, and like that part of her comes out when she's writing Dean? <laughs> like you are the straight guy inside of her, and then there's a gay guy inside of her that comes out. When That's true, and himself. you are the gay guy inside of her. <laughs> And you and are I'm the fire, down. and you are the forest, and you are a witness watching yeah. it. And there is a bisexual guy in there when she's riding gas, and it's all, it's also me. It's oh. true. <laughs> so we have a Q&A for season Wait, four. Yeah, Q&A. Um, um, your questions will be due by midnight Eastern time on January 27th, 2024. Hell yeah. Um, we only announced this, like, two days ago, but we don't have any questions yet, you guys. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Can you help? <laughs> this is yeah. true. And we put it at the very end of the episode, too, so. Yeah, literally no one it. was listening, but yeah. I don't know. Um, hit us hit us with the, the cues, and we'll give you the A's. Okay, so when the levy breaks, which, uh, you have told me it's pronounced Levy. Due to the saying. pronunciation in American Pie. <laughs> yeah, because and Crystal said to me, they say shabby to the Levy, not shabby to the Levy. <laughs> yeah. Well, society, <laughs> if they drove a Shivi Impala. <laughs> to the Levy, even. Yeah. Well... Before we go into this episode, this episode will focus or does focus a lot on Sam's uh, demon blood addiction arc and specifically on the medical abuse that is enacted on Sam by Dean and Bobby upon the discovery of this thing. That's supernatural then justifies. Yeah, this episode, um, this episode is going to be a t- tough uh, talk and if you think it's going to be a tough listen as well, you know, just proceed with caution. So, when the levy breaks, what did you know about this episode before you went in? So, I knew that Sam was going to be locked in the panic room and he would hallucinate. The two hallucinations I knew about were like Mary stroking his hair and telling him that he's strong and also stronger than Dean, and then one of a younger Sam with yellow eyes. I know that there's, like, a light from a hole in the ceiling and, like, a fan going, and that, like, there's going to be famous, famous shots of him sitting on the floor cross-legged looking up at it. Yeah, which is, of course, Um, the cover of this episode. Yes, and that at some point he also hallucinates himself having black veins in the mirror. Um, I know yeah. that Cass lets Sam out of the panic room to start the apocalypse or whatevs, and that at some point Bobby holds a gun at Sam and Sam takes it and directs it towards his heart and tells him to shoot. That is what I knew. I did not realize the Destiel scene was going to be in here until it was happening. And what a shock it is. I mean, we'll get into it when we get there. Mm-hmm. This episode is um, a lot. And mm. something that I found completely fascinating is 
the cast because it's a lot. The cast scenes, which are evidently like not like comic relief or anything, like they're not mm-hmm. funny. They are like the breather parts of this episode, you know. Like, yeah, because yeah. everything else was so heavy, and every time Cass is on screen, it's like, oh, okay, well, the crying can now stop for a little bit because we're about to look at Cass's beautiful face. Like, yeah, <laughs> like you told me when you were watching this, like, what's the point of Cass being here? Is he just here to look pretty? And I think he is, honestly. Like, he's here to look pretty so that you have some relief over the fact that everything is so miserable. Yeah. Yeah, he is just a hot piece of ass to me this episode, I'm afraid. Yeah, don't be afraid. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Why are you afraid? <laughs> Why are you afraid? Yeah, the then sequence. I'm glad that they don't have the scene where Sam and John fight and Sam's like, you told me if I left I should never come back. Like, you're, like let us make that connection ourselves <laughs> at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be so corny if it was in there. Um... I don't know. It's what you expect. Um, yeah. Demon blood drinking. Dean being like a dick about it. Like if I didn't know you, I would want to hunt you. That's in there, right? That, that's crazy. That I he mean, said that. I didn't know that this episode ends with how it ends. For some hmm. reason, I thought that fight happens in season five. Like about what? Like episode two, because they part right in season five. That's yes. why there's the whole Samus behind the bar and Dean is having a date with Cass episode mm-hmm. in season five. Right. And I thought before that, like before they separate, that's when the fight happens. Which, I don't know, I guess I'm getting my wires crossed. But because it happens here, so. But. Yeah. I did not expect it to be here. And I know that fight is about, like, Sam, you're a monster. Mm. So I didn't really. I don't know. Like, when I was watching the teaser, I was like, mm. why are they bringing this up? The, <laughs> and I uh, mean, I know why. Thing, yeah. I know why. It's because, you know, it's Dean's entire mindset. But I thought they were mm. going to lean on something else this episode. Got it. Yeah. So when, oh, like when the, it was revealed... I hated that you lied to me so yeah, much yeah. parts of season four instead. So, what in the end, when... It is obvious that they leaned completely on the if I didn't know you, I would want to hunt you part of it. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, okay, well, everything wow. is so miserable, and now everything is even more miserable, so. Sure is, bud. And we also get the clip from home where Mary apologizes to uh-huh. Sam, and he goes, for what? Oh, yeah. And he's so young and sad-looking. He's such a little baby. And I already started getting emotional when I saw that. Should Like, yeah. if I rewatch home, will it be, like, not good? Or, like, is it good for real? I mean, it was also good to me. And I did also watch it. Watch it before. And all of Supernatural also. Okay. But to be fair, like, when we started this podcast, I was so season one pilled. Like, the Mm -hmm. reason why I was like, we should start a Supernatural podcast was because... I don't know why I'm doing that voice. But because I watched season one, like, just a little bit before, right? Mm. So, like... I remember those stuff like completely, and then yeah. the future episode, uh, the future seasons, I remember less. So maybe like I was already in the mindset of I would like it because I was in season one mindset. So maybe yeah. I don't know. Maybe yeah, we start the episode right where we ended uh, or last time, which is Sam and uh, Bobby and Dane have just locked Sam in to that goddamn room. <sighs> Sam is. <sighs> What what happens here? They lock Sam in, and then Sam yeah. is there for a while, right? I think and then that, Dean comes back yeah, to yeah. open the window. Mm-hmm. And yeah, as Dean does that, uh, you know, Sam is in his. This is not funny. Let me out. This is crazy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Just open mm. the door, and Dean is saying like, "I'm not letting you out until you dry out." Sam said, "Look, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have lied to you. Just open the door." And Dean says, you don't have to apologize. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that you lied to me over and over again. I get it now. You couldn't help it. But, like, he's not saying this, like, in any way that is... It's very bitter. I mean, it's still a bad thing to say. But if it comes from a place of trying to understand, it will be less terrible. 
mm-hmm. because like even if um the action is bad it is coming from a place of trying to understand and so therefore there's the thought of well let's just make you understand it better because you are trying to understand right but like this is mm-hmm. not coming from a place of trying to understand anything this is just i'm angry i'm bitter and fuck you dude yeah and yeah sam is saying like i'm not some junkie and right the, which yeah so i guess like i guess first thing like so like when dean is saying like oh it's not your fault you lied to me you couldn't help it like bitterly and sarcastically or whatever it is because he is like saying because like this is You're an addiction drugs. but like yeah. like what but like the fact that yeah like you said the fact that he draws this conclusion and then uses it to be more angry at Sam instead of more compassionate is yeah. pretty wild. Like, why would that be the direction you go yeah. into, Dean? Okay, like, if your brother's been lying to you a bunch and you're like, well, I don't like that, why are you doing that? And then you discover it's because of, like, a substance abuse issue, then, like, like you're you're supposed to be less mad at him. Yeah, like because this is like I think we've said it before like last episode, but it's like purely a he's mad that Sam is drinking demon blood. Like yeah. That is the where the anger is at. And it's not about Sam is doing something that Dean doesn't like in terms of the other things like sam is acting in a way dean doesn't like because like if that is what dean is angry about then well he should have been angry like before he found out about yes the demon blood i guess the whole point dean is trying to make is like i get like you know one of the common things that people do say to addicts which is like it's your fault Mm -hmm. which (sighs) <sighs> yeah, Dean's saying I agree with that, and I'm saying it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> what a guy. Sam's also being ableist here, but he's not the one being medically, or, like, he is the one yeah. being medically abused, so... <laughs> like, we can deal with that after he's out of the panic room. Because the words they're using here are, you know, junky. And then Mm -hmm. Sam says, like, oh, you're trying to twist this into some drug intervention thing. So, like, you know, the what they're trying to say in the script is very clear. Like, the 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 parallels that they're trying to draw in the script is very clear. I think it was, like, last episode I was, like... It doesn't have to be one-to-one. Yeah. Yeah. Does Dean and Bobby understand that this is the role? Yes, they do. Uh, And they're being worse because of it. (laughs) Everything is so horrible. Yeah, they were like, it's a medical thing? Great, now we can do medical abuse. Like, yeah. Okay. And Sam says here that, like, I'm not drinking the demon blood for kicks. I'm getting strong enough to kill Lilith. Yeah, and which is says, mischaracterizing, uh, like, why people use drugs in the first place. Like, blah, 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 it gives me powers. Like, I don't, like, why do people use drugs because it, like, gives them powers in a way like i'm reminded of like i mean people do cocaine to do things yeah exactly like a community organizer like who spoke to like my like group at school once or whatever who like runs a mutual aid fund for unhoused people in the city was talking about how like for example like if like you're homeless and every time you try to sleep on a bench or something and, like, the park is closed or whatever, the cops yeah. come by and force you to leave. Like, sometimes, like, the best option to, like, keep you, like, walking all night instead of getting arrested is, like, to do, like, a stimulant. Like, yeah. plenty of people do drugs for, like, quote-unquote powers. Yeah. And I don't know, Sam doesn't need to separate himself in that way. How do I say this? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not American, mm-hmm. so my my perspective and, like, you know the 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 Philippines, which is where I live. So like where I live, the attitude and the like um, perception and everything towards drugs is just you know it's just going to be different because we're it's mm-hmm. a very different place. We've gone through very different things like in recent history. Mm-hmm. Uh, but from my understanding, in the United States, isn't it like 
a lot of people are addicted also to painkillers. Yeah, there's like an opioid like Addic- pandemic, yeah, I think. Problem yeah. in the United States. And like that too is like a that starts from a place of uh trying to not be in pain. Yeah. And you can argue continues from that place also. Mm-hmm. And you know, like uh people who have anxiety if a downer helps you well it helps you yeah the, this perspective of like um the, like whatever Sam is saying here is like <laughs> i don't know the thing is like i don't want to criticize sam so much for like his views on um whatever because again he is in the position of trying to argue to someone who is enacting abuse on him yeah. to stop it. So, like, um, yeah. I'm not saying that Sam should have the correct uh, views on drug use just mm-hmm. as a character, but I'm saying, yeah. like, if some, if you're talking, if you're trying to reason out with someone who has the views that Dean has, mm. you would try to communicate with him in a language that fits his views because yeah. like, well, he has the power over you so you have yeah. to pretty much so right. yeah though i guess we're meant to believe that sam, sam like does, does believe what he's saying i think because of so. his hallucinations later yeah yeah i don't know hopefully yeah once he's out and does some healing which may never happen <laughs> I mean, yeah that's when we can admiral. work on that <sighs> you know, this entire yeah. episode, it's so miserable. It truly is. That, he's gonna like, be in that in- pit next season. Like, the entire time, I just keep on trying to fast forward into the future of Supernatural to be like, mm-hmm. but, you know, like, Sam does Hashtag, it, Sam it, gets does it. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag it gets better. Hashtag it gets better. I don't know. Like, Dean <laughs> dies at the end of the show and Sam leaves <laughs> like a full time. <laughs> Hashtag it gets better, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, main, the main thing that I thought about a lot this episode was that someday Sam is going to be friends with Rowena. And mm-hmm. Rowena is like a representation of like Sam, everything Sam is afraid of, you know? Like mm. she has powers, she like does devil worship, whatever. Mm. And she is on the side of the demons, like just by technicality. And those are all things that Sam is being accused of right now. And he is mm. so afraid it's true for you know, some of those things. And Rowena is all of those things. And you know what? She's happy. She's competent. She's slaying. She's yeah. in a beautiful dress all the time. Yeah, she's a natural redhead. Yeah, <laughs> she's a natural redhead. And and more importantly, like she's on Sam's side. Like, I mean, not mm. at the beginning, I suppose. But like... For most of it, like, they're friends, you know? Yeah. And this is something that Sam was so afraid of becoming. And she's fine. Mm-hmm. And, like, I think about that. And I don't know. And that is what I mean that, like, I try to fast forward to the very future. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, well, someday Sam is going to meet Rowena. Yeah. And also Dean will die. And it's going to be okay, you guys. <laughs> Uh, if only there was a period where Dean was dead and Rowena wasn't. Oh yeah, this is true. They don't overlap properly. Very sad. Yeah, maybe Rowena was the blurry one, and you know Eileen <laughs> was also was inside, and that's why you didn't see her. But that's she's also true. there. It's true. Yeah. God, imagine if like Sam did get together with like Eileen or something, and then uh-huh. <laughs> Eileen like decided to be like, okay, we'll name the kid Dean. Like. <laughs> No. no, this is why you Dean got the divorce. Sam. That would not happen. Like this new <laughs> Dean Winchester would never come to pass. Like this is why Sam got divorced. <sighs> I think I think Rowena dared Eileen to do it, yeah. but she thought Sam wouldn't actually go through with it. 
But he was like, yeah. oh, you, you really want to honor my dead brother that much? Like, it'd be rude of me to say no. I didn't know you and Dean were so close. And he Poor has girl. a doubt on the birth certificate, and she's screaming and crying. Well, that kid still has time to be trans at any point in their life. <laughs> And that exactly. includes changing their name to not Dean. So, so Sam says, I'm getting strong enough to kill this. And then we have this extremely it's funny what? Key line. Key line what? Where Dean goes, strong? And Sam says, yeah. And Dean goes, this is about us and far away. I can't even say a bit of that. This is about us far away from as strong as you can get. Try we. <laughs> <laughs> watching this i was like screaming like what the fuck is going on honestly what is this Try men weak. will be like i view this as an addiction like parallel to heroin addiction and that makes you weak desperate and pathetic <laughs> no, i mean i understand that but also like the whole like, you can just say strong. Far away from strong as you can get. <laughs> Try weak is the funniest line anyone has ever said to that. Yeah, he's in the antonym section on the source.com. <laughs> he's like, no, see, the color on this is like, re- like really gray, which means that it's like the word that's really unlike the word I've looked up, and the words that are dark red are similar. <gasps> Well, he's he's weak. <laughs> he's as far away from strong as he can get, which is weak. <laughs> but yeah, Supernatural's an educational program for elementary schoolers. <laughs> They're learning about antonyms today. Sam says, um, "Killing Lilith is what matters." Or are you busy so being self righteous you forget about her? And Dean says. Lilith's going to die. Bobby and I will kill her, but not with you. Congrats, Sammy. You just brought yourself a bench warmer seat to the apocalypse. And wow. he slams down, he slams that fucking window cover. And, you know, Sammy's inside just shouting, like, let me out of here. It is yeah. fascinating that, you know, Dean immediately is here being like, congratulations, you're not going to fight an apocalypse. It's also what's brought up later, like, no, I'm the one who's supposed to be, not you. Whatever. Mm. And what is Dean supposed to, like, do? Like, no one told me his task. I don't know. Like, be cast as sub? I don't know. <laughs> Something, I suppose. What is interesting is that Sam is just doing his, like, he's, like, responding to Dean, like, defensively and angrily. But then at, like, you just bought yourself a win- bench warmer seat to the apocalypse, that's when he starts, like, getting scared again and telling Dean, like, no, wait. But, alas. Which I guess the point of that is just that he's, like, the main reason he wants to get out, even right now, is to kill Lilith, because that's his main focus. But yeah. Oh, Sam. Yeah. I don't think it comes from a place of, like... I want to, you know, have a role in Apocalypse Ola. Like, I think I don't think it's coming from that specific perspective. Mm-hmm. It's coming from a I just solemnly do not think that Bobby and Dean can do it. Which is yeah, I mean, I don't think they can do it either. Yeah, and I mean, Sam does kill Lilith, and then it starts the Apocalypse. So hell yeah, baby. Hell yeah. Ugh. I hate the the window cover on the panic room door so much. Yeah. Just, yeah, like, the way that Dean just slams it shut when he leaves as, like, a... This is just to show that I have power over you and I decide when you, like, get spoken to and when you're listened to. And also, I just want to prevent you from seeing out of this tiny room because I wish you to be miserable forever. And also, this is because I feel guilty about locking you in here, so by, like shutting this window cover like i'm like pretending that there's like an animal in here or like no one in here like shut the fuck up dean that is actually like that topic of like dean being like oh that's not sam that's yeah someone else Mm. and i mean what really brings it up is later when dean and bobby are talking and 
like Dean is like, so when's it gonna end? You know, and it's mm-hmm. like the I feel like the the kind of message inside that is like, when are we gonna get Sam back? Exactly. Like, like you haven't broken your tr- like your trust inexorably. Like he's not gonna be like the yeah. Sam you knew before season four when he comes back because you have done this to him. I mean, it follows a lot of the things that people say about addicts and like people with mental illnesses that are severe. It's like, oh, that's not them anymore. So like <laughs> the treatment is less trying to help the person and more trying to bring them back. Mm-hmm. And so that excuses a lot of methodologies where you ignore the status of the patient right now, like how mm-hmm. it's going to affect them right now for the benefit of, oh, but in the future, it's going to be them. Because mm-hmm. the dem- the, this person in front of me right now is not them. And Dean dehumanizing Sam is like, well, it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> sure uh, is, but... It's like, the thing is, you know, that perspective comes from a place of... I'm sure it's difficult to be in a situation where a loved one is experiencing this. But it's just that so much of the talk about this kind of stuff is focused on that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, if you have any mental illness that isn't, like, quote-unquote, the acceptable ones... Mm. If you look that shit up online, I swear to God, like, yeah. it, it, it's so easy to find which ones society thinks are, like, acceptable mental illnesses and which ones are not. Because if you look up, like, how to deal with depression, it's always like, how do you deal with depression, with mm-hmm. your depression? How do you deal with your anxiety? You look up how to deal with schizophrenia, it's like, how to deal with a loved one who has schizophrenia. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And addiction again i don't really understand how the the um cultural aspects and the societal uh environment of mm. regarding addiction is in the united states yeah so plus in 2009 yeah so. plus in 2009 also but like i feel like that also applies to addiction with the addition of people treat it as if you know the burden of fault is solely on the person themselves Mm -hmm. so you know that also adds another layer of complexity in the thing yeah this is the point in the episode where i just uh for context i don't really take much notes in episodes anymore in the beginning i used to a lot but Mm. now that i'm more comfortable with my english i don't really do it so this is the point where i just pause it completely and just start typing like just Mm. like long and long and long and it's not even specifically so that i can talk about it in the podcast it's yeah. just that it's so much and i want to mm-hmm. put it out there like a lot of the things i tapped out it's not like even for discussion really it's just that ah, ah, yeah I'm so bad <laughs> i need to get it out yeah this, uh, yeah this is first the first episode of supernatural in recent memory of mine, like since we got back from um, our break, where mm. I am thinking of it outside of supernatural, like mm-hmm. I am realizing again that like medio like a, like makes you think about your life type shit, you know? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, pretty horrible episode to think that off. But good lord, good lord, we go to a bit later in the panic room. And Sam, like, there's lights flickering, and then he starts calling out that, like, guys, get down here, something's coming. It's a hallucination of Alistair, but the fact that they don't check on him at all, like, something could be coming. It's the apocalypse. But whatever. So, person who appears, hallucination of Alistair, and he... Ties Sam up crucifixion style to yeah. a cross in a devil's trap. It's like kind of like the boob strap table situation, except he's fully clothed. There's no boobs. Yeah. I mean, there's boobs. They're just under a shirt. This is true. 
No, it's just a torture scene where Sam's, like, yeah. screaming and telling him to stop. And Alistair's, like, cutting into his stomach with a knife, presumably. We cut to, like, the, like, camera from, like, an outside perspective. It's Sam on a bed in the middle of the Devil's Trap with his arms out crucifixion style, like, screaming and stuff. And there's a bucket by the side of the bed. Oh, God. Yeah. Which was upsetting to look at. But, I, I mean, there's no plumbing down there. <laughs> Ugh. You know what? Mm. I would say this. Um, the directing in this episode is excellent. Not and it's by <laughs> Robert Singer. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to everyone. <laughs> but, like, Robert Singer's late with this one. Yeah. Yeah. The, I it's do good. agree with that. Like, I mean, my favorite part, we're going to bring it up later, is in the right before the fight scene at the end. The way Sam's face is framed and Dean's face is framed is amazing. But here in this one, all the hallucinations, the way it's done is like hallucination. And then as Crystal said, there's like a third, pers- third person point of view where you see that Sam is having a hallucination and talking to mm-hmm. no one. They do it for, I think, every single one. Or I'm not sure if they do it with the young Sam. But they do it with Alistair, with Mary, and with Dean. The way it is positioned in the narrative in every single one of those is, I think, very excellent. Here in uh, Alistair, I mean, obviously, this is a hallucination. So we know that it's hallucination. It's violence. Alistair is enacting violence on Sam. And then with Mary, we also know it's a hallucination. But now it's like an act of kindness. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the distinction between uh, Sam is alone and he's so afraid and he's hurting so, so, so much. Mm. And then with Mary, it's like he's alone, but he is feeling hopeful and, you know, yeah. he is being given comfort. And then the last one, we don't mm. start with the explicit knowledge that it's a hallucination. Yes. Because it's completely reasonable that Dean would be there, standing there. Mm -hmm. And the conversation actually starts with Dean showing, like, concern in a way that he hasn't before. Hmm. Uh, It starts with him being like, why are you doing this, Sam? Why are you... Well, he says, why are you doing this to yourself? But, like, this Mm -hmm. is, like, the first time pretty much that Dean has, like, asked an explanation from Sam. And is trying to understand what Sam is going through, why he's going through it, et cetera, et cetera. And it does start from a benevolent place. And you're thinking, you go in, you're thinking, oh my God, are they finally going to talk? Oh my God, <laughs> Dean is like actually trying to put out like an olive branch to try to understand Sam. And then it cuts to like the third person POV and you realize this is a hallucination and I legitimately just start sobbing so much because it's like even in Sam's subconscious he is trying to give Dean the benefit of the doubt like Mm. Dean is currently enacting this fucking so horrible thing to Sam and Sam's subconscious is still like but Dean is doing it out of like trying to help me like, he's trying to understand me. And then the same continues, and then it turns into Dean being, like, you know, the Dean and Sam's hallucination being as evil as he becomes, like, you know, later in the episode. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that, that small moment where you think Dean is going to reach out to Sam and try to actually understand him and talk to him. Yeah. And then it's a it's a hallucination by Sam's brain. It's truly, truly a fucking moment. And yeah. I think I think like the build up of from it uh the build up to it from this scene with Alistair, first time it happens, and then Mary and then Dean is quite excellent. So yeah. G- good job, Robert Singer. Apparently the fucking zoom <laughs> is not his only trick in his basket. <laughs> yeah. They did, like, one Zoom that I found really, really annoying. Which one? Which one? Which one? 
It wasn't like a Robert Singer Zoom. It was just like a, the Zoom on like Dean's face when he's like, I'm a hero and I'm not going to let my brother turn into a monster. <laughs> I didn't even realize that there was a Zoom this episode. But it's yeah, yeah. It's not. I, am I lying? What if there's no Zoom at all? Should I check? Robert, Robert Singer Zooms are truly one of a kind. <laughs> Yeah, it <laughs> wasn't really? it wasn't a singer type zoom. It was just exactly. a normal type zoom. Like if it existed. To, they need to name that zoom the singer zoom. Yes. Mm-hmm. Buddy, it sure is. Yes, there's a zoom. <laughs> but a, yeah. a subtle one. It's at like twenty two twenty if you wanna see Dean be the worst guy alive. We go upstairs to Bobby's and he and Dean are imbibing substances that they will later be told, like, will be told by, like, Supernatural that they're addicted to in order to feel better in a situation. Interesting. <laughs> they're drinking whiskey together. Sam is, uh, very audibly screaming in the background. Yes, he's screaming, stop, stop. Dean goes, like, how long is this gonna go on? And Bobby's like, oh, I'll look it up in my Demon Detox manual. Oh, wait, there isn't one. Like, I have no idea how long it'll take. And also, Sam might die. Like, (laughs) okay. So I guess... I guess here's where... I mean, the thing is, like, they don't know what's going to happen. This is essential. They don't know. They have no clue. First of all, like, why didn't they put Sam in a place where he potentially may be more comfortable. And, like, yeah. it's because they're afraid he's going to escape. Well, I mean, there's a lot of issues already with that. But, like, if the point is that we need to keep him here and help him, which is, like, okay, fine. If that's the stance we're going to take, put somebody in the room with him. Yeah. Have somebody watch him. Mm. He's going to die. Yeah. I legitimately, like, if Cass didn't let him out, I think he would have died. Yes. So Bobby yeah. says so. Bobby yep. said that too. Yeah. I can't believe Bobby was like he might die, and Dean wasn't. And like, they were just like, okay. Dean wasn't like, I need to be in that room to make sure that we're not going too far and that he won't die. But like, Dean is not going to do that because his perspective is like, can't. Do that's anything. not. That's He's not Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> no, his perspective is like. If he's going to die, at least he's gonna die with less uh, human blood than he was uh, in that panic room. God. God. Like he will just have demon blood, like, fundamentally. It's like, he was a panic yeah. when he was a kid and he just has it. I mean, we've talked about, like, what the fuck does it mean to drink demon blood and then have demon blood? Yeah. I have no idea what that means. But also, like, is Sam the only one who can develop, like, powers from drinking demon blood? Well, the other psychic kids could, but oh, are you saying like could like, like if I a regular schmegular person yeah. did it? Yeah, I don't know, maybe. Because like, <laughs> I mean, the the line that you know Bobby said is like, no one ever wrote one, which is mm. like, but did somebody experience it in the past? <laughs> like, yeah. did someone just have a demon boyfriend and then they right like, they were into blood play the, or the whatever? Day? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, did somebody just eat someone out while they're on their period and that someone happened to be a demon? Like, what's the situation here? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Sam has community in mm. that way. What they're doing right now, right? Like, they're locking Sam in a room and not letting him out in case he drinks demon blood or whatever. Like, they're enacting, like, a cold turkey method on him. And, like, the thing about that, like... They're, like, drawing parallels to real life. And the thing about going cold turkey, like, in real life is that it can be dangerous. Like, there are some drugs like alcohol where, like, you, like, in serious cases, quitting cold turkey causes people to, like, literally die of alcohol withdrawal syndrome. Um, also, just in terms of, like, completely unassisted, like, remission from substance abuse, like... There's, like, a paper that was published a month ago in the Journal of Drug and Alcohol Dependence, um, and it found that, like, opioid addiction treatments that aren't assisted by medication like methadone 
are literally worse than not being treated at at all, like, as in, like, just continuing to take the drug or, like, get better on your own or whatever, like, in terms of risk of overdose death, because if you go cold turkey, you lose your tolerance really fast, so then, like, if after you leave the program you relapse, you're a lot more likely to overdose and die. So, like, they're doing this thing where they're taking Sam off of demon blood with no medical assistance and also when, like, Sam himself did not agree to stop using, and now they're locking him in a room and ignoring him. So, like, yeah, like they said, like, they don't know anything about this. Like, they fully could have killed Sam with this, or, like, if, like, the unassisted opioid treatment, like, situation happens, like, if he leaves after, like, they've kept him there for a while, and then he takes steam and blood again because, like, he didn't agree to be in this panic room. Like, this isn't something that he's agreed to stop doing. Like, he could have overdosed and died. And, like, they are aware of this because Bobby literally says later, like, I think we're killing him because of cold turkey and all that shit. But, like, they still stick to the strategy and they still make Dean seemed like a good guy by wanting that to be the strategy because yeah. despite like all of this evidence like like there's an obsession with going cold turkey as like being the clean cr- yeah. yeah as like getting clean yeah that kind of like language it's like the only correct way to be in remission from an addiction is to go cold turkey And not because, like, you're worried about... It's not because of, like, the science, because that's not what the science says. And it's not because, like, you're concerned about the health of the person going through withdrawal or whatever. And you think that's, like, the best way. Yeah, Yeah, Dean literally wants him to die instead. It's because, like, yeah, like you said, like, it's the drinking demon blood itself. Itself, yeah. It's the issue. Like, that is something that Dean... And Bobby and the show considered to be, like, like an evil action that, like, dirties, like, your soul, Dean literally says. That's what they've been saying this whole season with, like, Chuck's whole fucking sucking blood. You've gotta know that's wrong shit. Like, (laughs) it's just literally, like, we think the action itself, like, we Supernatural think the action itself is disgusting. And, And, like, we think that you as viewers think that, like, the act of, like being addicted, or, sorry, the act of, like, taking substances or, like, the condition of being addicted is, like, disgusting also, Mm -hmm. and we're going to draw on that to make you scared of Sam this season and to make you want him to stop drinking demon blood. Yeah. But, like, yeah, doing drugs is, like, a morally neutral action, and addiction is a morally neutral condition. And also, like, like, the, the actual issues are, like, if, like, it causes you to hurt people yeah. in some way. But, like, Sam has not hurt anyone this season because he wanted to drink demon blood. Like, it's never happened. Dean hasn't seen it. We haven't seen it. Like, he, what, like, he, like, cut that demon's neck to drink out of it, like, before and he killed her. Like, he was gonna me. kill her anyway. Yeah. <laughs> He was gonna kill her anyway. (laughs) Dean wanted him to kill her anyway. Like, he was gonna kill, like, Alistair with his mind. Dean was gonna kill Alistair with the knife. Like, Dean keeps telling Sam, you should kill people with a knife instead of exercising them. Like, I think Dean's the one doing harm there. What, like, what are the only action I can think that could be, like, bad is, like, lying to Dean and, like, this is a a very disproportionate response to something that Dean can just get over or talk through with Sam some more. So, like, it really, it's not about any, like, actual, like, harm that exists. It's just moral disgust at this drug use thing. Here's the thing. Later on. In the mm-hmm. episode, Dean says something that you just mentioned that I found so interesting. I'm going to bring it up now. Mm-hmm. But he says, his soul? You're like, they're eating his soul or something? Yeah. And I was like, wait, does Dean think that drinking demon blood means that when Sam dies, he's going to go to hell? 
Yeah, I think he thinks that. It could be true for all we know. I mean, it could be true. But, like, that thought then, like, recontextualizes Dean's, like, moral righteousness feeling in his um, situation. And, like, the, you know, the, as you said, the dying human bit. Mm. Because it's like, well... If that happens, at least Sam will have a chance to not have, like, you know, eternal damnation and torture. Which Dean knows for a fact is what happens when you go to hell when you die. Mm -hmm. Except the show does not do anything with that. Does not lean into it. Mm -hmm. It is like a one-mention line that you have to make that leap to get to. Yes. So, I, I heard that line and I was like... Wouldn't it have been interesting if maybe they leaned into that just to yeah. provide us with some, like, I don't know, like moral ambiguity, whatever? Yeah. That, yeah. Cause, like, what is good and what is bad? And, like, Sam is trying to stop the apocalypse, but he's doing this thing that might get him to hell. Is that good? Is that about what's happening? And I don't know. It's like a what if of this season, I feel like. Because they yeah. did just come from hell. Like, that is a fresh memory. And if you evoke that very fresh memory to be like... Mm-hmm. And the reason why I don't want you going down this path is because I'm afraid that you're going to be in hell. And when you're in there, no one's going to get you out like they did me. And you're just going to be suffering for the rest of eternity. And like mm-hmm. that's a valid fear. It would imbibe yeah. Dean's actions with... well more validity i suppose yes but they already think that you think he's right exactly but like supernatural already assumes that like dean's perspective perspective is already sufficiently imbibed with reason so like okay well yeah uh, and it also says something about dean and supernatural as a whole that he thinks that Sam's going to go to hell for drinking demon blood, but if we tie him down and force him to not drink it for a few days, and then he dies, like, it leaving his body Body. will be what allows him to get into heaven. Like, it's not about, like, his actions or his wants or anything. It's just about, like, let's get the bad, evil, like, dirtying stuff out of him. Yeah, it's because Dean, you know, Supernatural itself is a very biologically deterministic show. Just, Mm. you know, fundamentally. Do you think Sam thinks he's going to go to hell? Interesting question. I don't know. Maybe he hasn't thought that far ahead. Yeah, I mean, if if you stop the He thinks he's going to die, though. Yeah. He's like, like, I'm going to stop the apocalypse and probably die in the process. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, if you stop the apocalypse, I feel like that gets you, like, a ticket to heaven. Even though it's kind of terrible. Except, I mean, Sam yeah. is kind of terrible, but not for the reasons that Supernatural yeah. is trying to tell. <laughs> for yeah. other reasons, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that he does think of himself as, like, being clever and using the demon blood as a tool, so, like... He's not going to be treated by the heaven and hell system like a monster or like a demon or whatever. So yeah, I think that I think he hasn't thought that far ahead. But like, if you asked him, do you think you're going to go to hell? He'll go like, I mean, probably not. <laughs> it's because Sam is treating the world like it's generous in the way it thinks of him, mm-hmm. like. He thinks that the world is going to see him and see complexity. Right. Which is why he's so shocked when Ruby's like, angels are going, like, if the angels see me, like, they're going to kill me and possibly you also in, like, 402 or whatever. And it's like, why? I mean, I'm not doing anything wrong. Yeah, and you're not doing anything wrong. Like, we're trying to save the world. And, you know, Sam in that place is trying to be like, you know, come from a place of complexity. Mm. And trying to understand the situation, except this world of supernatural. And you know what? The world outside of supernatural that is making the world of supernatural <laughs> refuses to engage with him in co- with complexity. So now we're here. 
I, he still has like complexity. Like this episode yeah, is yeah, of about course, of like course. yeah, giving him death, but they refuse to engage in his demon blood shrinking with complexity. complexity. Mostly yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, God, literally no telling how long it'll take hell or if Sam will even live through it. Okay, Bobby, this episode it's kind of odd because like he sort of later acts like Dean just sort of made him do this and he's not that into it. What 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 is the situation with Bobby right now? Maybe maybe we'll get into it later, but like I'm unsure how like Bobby seems to oscillate a lot in terms of like whether or not he wanted to do this to Sam in the first place and like how he feels about it. But yeah. I think it's just because he's, like, there to provide an opposing perspective to Dean's, so there's not a lot of internal consistency. I think Bobby just got himself in a position where Dean called him first, is what happened. Mm-hmm. Like, if Sam called him first, I think this mm. would be quite a different situation. Huh. You know like- what I mean? Sam would be like, I need you to help me mediate a discussion between yeah. me and Dean. Pretty yeah. much. Like, Dean is mad at me. I don't know what to do. Here's the situation. Can you help me? And if he did that, like, maybe Bobby would be like, Sam, I don't think you should be doing this. But I don't think he'll be locking Sam up, you know? Yeah. But, I mean- yeah, because... Dean is the first one to be like, mm-hmm. Bobby, we need to lock Sam up. Bobby, please. So now they're here. Yeah. I mean, bad of Bobby to be capable of doing it either way, but yeah. I am sad well, that Sam didn't call him first. Like, sometimes you have two annoying friends and one of them calls <laughs> you first about their drama and this is what happens. Yeah. Yeah. We get, we get Boofus. Like, I feel like this Hell is our yeah. first proper Boofus. Well, I mean, Bobby was like, you should go to Rufus and bring yeah. a thing. That's true. Uh, That's and Rufus true. was like, who sent you here? Bobby Singer. Oh, hell no. Go away, <laughs> Dean. Right? I That's think so. Love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's old man Yowie. It really, really is. Like, they will be more divorced than Destiel ever could be. Yeah. You know what's more romantic than getting divorced? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's such a funny beginning to a statement. <laughs> well, nothing is more romantic than getting divorced and then mm-hmm. getting back together. And you know what? Both of us will do it. They will do it's it. It's true. I believe in them. I believe in them. Bobby's phone rings and he picks it up and he goes, Hello. Suck dirt and die, Rufus. You call me again, I'll kill you. <laughs> Love like, is love real. is real! <laughs> uh, honestly, suck dirt and die is so funny. <laughs> like, I don't... What does that even mean? What, like... What image is that trying to, like, gather from? Is it just, like, I think a it's suck, like, get buried die, alive and then dirt. suffocate. <laughs> Well, yeah. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's about, like, being familiar enough with someone that, like, you do this and you know that they'll call you again. <laughs> it's it's funny because, I mean, Bobby immediately knows why Rufus is calling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He says that it's because Rufus knows. Ooh. But, like, about what? Just about the seals, right? <laughs> <laughs> that he's gay, I don't know. Because, <laughs> like, I thought it was about, like, Sam's demon <laughs> blood addiction, but, like, no. It's l- later it's seals. just, like, it's about it's the seals. What's revealed. Yeah. Yes. Did Bobby tell him? Did Bobby tell him? Oh my god, love his story. <laughs> yeah, no, for real, though. I mean, what are the times in the show where somebody tells someone about a seal? <laughs> Do you didn't cast in that fucking, uh, the green kitchen? Room? Oh, the kitchen, yes. Ruby and Sam on that bed. Mm. And you know what? <laughs> Rufus and Bobby. So Also yeah, in love bed. Is real. <laughs> also in bed. Love is real. Love is real. The phone rings again, and Bobby goes, I'm busy, you son of a bitch. This better be important. Ugh, literally, he calls again. 
right after. I love love. <laughs> Do we sound so ridiculous? Like, I mean all of this shit earnestly. <laughs> no, I mean it too. Except for all, I probably think that getting divorced isn't that romantic. But the rest of it, I mean it. No, I think getting divorced and then getting back together oh, is yeah. romantic. That's romantic. Yeah. You have to get married twice. That's where the romance is. Exactly. We go back to the room. Sam's there. And there is another Sam in there. It's Sam. As in after school special Sam. Oh my god. A very mm-hmm. supernatural Christmas and after school special. It's the same Sam. Is it? No. It can't be. Wait, is it? It says. It says. Wait. Okay, but the the something wicked Sam was a different guy. Yeah, but who the what does fucking what does he look like in the thing? Yeah, that is him. Hi, Colin Ford. Is that his name? Yeah. Hi, Colin. That's real nice. I did not connect that dot. I suppose he looked quite young, so. This is the hallucination I started tearing up while washing, and the other two are the ones that you started tearing up while washing, so it's about the complexity of the the human experience being, like, (laughs) the the, the spectrum of of time stirring Supernatural's 421 when the levee breaks that you cry. Exactly. And I want to reiterate, I did not uh, tear up. I... Sob. Right. <laughs> so, You're right. That's yeah. another scale to think about. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah. It's young Sam and mm. he he's like I'm hallucination and it's me or I guess it's you. Sam is talking to his younger self in kind of like a defeated way. Mm. Young Sam is just being like what happened? How could you do this to me? I thought we were going to be normal. Mm. And sounds like I tried, but you know, didn't pan out that way. Sorry, yeah. kid. But he does sound quite sincere on like yeah, I tried, yeah, I did. Like he is looking up sadly and sounding yeah. hurt. And like he he does sound sorry on the sorry kid. Young Sam says, like, I mean that's all you have to say. It's all we ever wanted and we were so close, you got away from that. You quit hunting. You're really gonna become a lawyer and get married. Why'd you blow it? Mm. And Sam says, they killed Jessica. Which, yeah. this entire conversation is like, every single line is like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I, it's, first of all, you got away from dad, specifically, not, you yes. got away from them. Like, Dean is not included in this equation, which is, mm-hmm. well, that's something to me. Yeah. We, this Kid is like, what, 12? 14, Sam 14. Says. I mean, that's four years of your life you dream of getting out. No, yeah, at least. If Sam g- went to college at 18. Do we think he mm. did? Yeah, I think he would have applied as soon as he could. Though, that's you're right, true. like, it would take, it's possible that, like, he had to repeat some grades while growing up. Yeah. But I, I, don't, mean, I feel like we assumed that like, he was 22 in season one. He's, 22, dude. That's true. Right, no, that's true. Because if he's four years younger than Dean, we have Dean's... 22. 26. 26. No, no, no. But also, like, Dean did say for two years I didn't bother you. So... Maybe Sam went to community college. Sam wasn't a senior. (laughs) Okay. Like, yeah, he started at, like, 20. Wait. Okay, so Sam just fast-tracked through college then? No, no, no. Yeah. No, Sam was a senior. He took the fucking thing and he was gonna. The, be well, he in law took the school LSAT, but like. Well, yeah. okay, he was going to law school next year for sure. Because no. you can take the LSAT like early <laughs> year. So maybe he started college when he was 20 or something. Yeah. I think we're meant to think did. that he did the four years or whatever, though. Um, you got away from dad. You quit hunting is yeah. the next one. You quit hunting. Which is, I mean. We've said in the past that Sam was like, I don't have to quit hunting. I can just go no, to school. Yeah, and it's, but no, it's he John. wants to. It's John who was like, no, you leave. You live forever for whatever reason. Don't ever come back to the hunting world. So mm. Sam, I think like the I'll still hunt was kind of like a concession for him. It was like, right. don't worry, dad. 
I'm gay, but oh. I'm not <laughs> going to wear the gay earring, you know? Yeah. So, and Jal was like, you, you either, you either be straight or you be gay with the gay earring. And he chose the gay earring. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think also this episode puts a lot of focus on Sam. Like, always knowing, like, from a child that there was something wrong something with him. Something wrong, yeah. And I think in that case, like, he probably did want to quit hunting his whole life because it's yeah. like, if I leave this world where there are monsters into the normal world where there aren't, then I no longer am potentially a monster. You know, all that fucking conversation about, like, sounds like, ever since I was a kid, I knew... Mm. Who the fuck, when they're a child, doesn't think there's something wrong with them? <laughs> well, no, sincerely. It's true. Like, <laughs> I think every single person was like, I was a monster when I was a kid. I don't know if I thought I was a monster. I probably just thought I was like a crazy <laughs> weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, yeah. Yeah. I think I've talked about this in a podcast. I will talk about myself constantly at any occasion. But I think I've said this in the past true. that, like, <laughs> that's true no but like I was talking about how like Sam didn't like have friends the way Dean did or like you know Dean was closer to Bobby Dean was closer to blah 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 blah, blah. and Sam probably felt very disconnected because of that because everybody seems to like Dean more mm. and it's like I think that's part of the reason why Sam was like something's wrong with me because like people don't like me as much as they should and his mm-hmm. basis is like how much they like Dean because Dean is the only other kind of his age person in his life. Yeah. And it's like, Sam, have you considered that maybe Dean is just charismatic and you're just a killjoy? Like, that's <laughs> fine. It doesn't make you a monster, dude. <laughs> yeah, I mean, also, like, do, do we have canon on, like, when John started suspecting something was up with Sam? I thought you were like, do we have canon on if Sam was a killjoy when he was a kid? <laughs> <laughs> he probably would. I don't know. But what John? Sam as a kid was perfectly fine and nice. <laughs> he he literally like all Sam girls. I'm saying he literally gave Dean the toy <laughs> from the, the cereal. <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> what issues you have with that kid. <laughs> yeah. So Sam as a kid was canonically not that much of a killjoy. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I don't know. I mean, wasn't there this whole bit where John was, like, following Sam in Stanford? Yes. So, I, but I mean, that's after he left. So that mm-hmm. could very well maybe, like, I don't know. I feel like he knew pretty early on. I feel like, like Sam could sense that John treated him differently in, like, a yeah. bad way. I think that could definitely cause you to think something's wrong with you. Yeah, the problem with trying to summon, like, facts about Supernatural is that they're Supernatural, especially, like, with Sam and John and who knows what, when, where. Like, Mm. there's the Supernatural TV show, and then so much of, like, the Supernatural, like, comics or whatever, the whatever, the anime, (laughs) the, like, (laughs) journal, whatever, it's, like, kind of like very John the the, epi- the seasons where John was present centric right mm-hmm. so there's also that to gather from and then there's also just my head mm-hmm. so I don't ever know which ones are true I have yeah. no idea it's, yeah like Supernatural is so long it's so difficult to find anything mm-hmm. about anything yeah I don't remember. Yeah, he and then Young Sam continues like you were gonna become a lawyer and get married. Forty, mm. the, I mean, Young Sam knows about Jessica, so we can assume that this is like a future desire, the being a lawyer and getting married. But imagine like yeah. being fourteen years old and being like, <laughs> I want to be a married lawyer when I grow up. <laughs> yeah. No, I think maybe it's just like, I want, you know, a normal a life. Job. And to Sam, a normal life is like, picket fence, get married. And yeah. maybe he really wants to do a lawyer ever since he was a kid. Like, I don't know, maybe he saw a movie. What's a lawyer movie? Legally Blonde. <laughs> 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 when did that come out? I, I, I love, like, my the, the thing that I was about to say was To Kill a Mockingbird. 
so like the two lawyer movies you and I know collectively is Legally Blonde and To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah. Okay, Legally Blonde was 2001, so that's about when like Sam started at Stanford. Yeah. So you think? I mean, maybe he was something else before he was free law, and then he saw Legally Blonde. You know what? Maybe he played Ace Attorney and he was like, let's move to the free law department. <laughs> yeah, the non-existent one. As we said, Sam says they killed Jessica. Which is, yeah. it's fascinating that's the first one. That's like the main reason. I mean, it is yeah. the main reason because he did go back. He did go back. Mm-hmm. He was going to stay. You bring up that like Sam calls her Jessica nowadays yeah. and young Sam calls him Jess or sorry yeah. young Sam calls her Jess here like what what does it mean because I think the young Sam is trying to appeal to the emotional aspect just as a person not as an idea yeah Jessica's the name on the gravestone young Sam says if you haven't run off with Dean you'd have been there to protect her and she'd still be alive which is I think we have been talking about how, like, Sam's perspectives on being a hunter, your responsibility to the yes. people you love, what it means, blah, 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 blah. And, like, this is, like, you know, this is Sam's psyche manifesting mm-hmm. that thought and telling it to himself. Like, something that I think he wanted to tell um, Jimmy and Adam. Yeah. Something he wanted to tell Adam that was, like, well, if John thought you had to be a hunter, you would have stayed with your mom and she won't be dead. So, Mm -hmm. young Sam is like, as Crystal said, you think Jess would want you to turn into this? She loved you. You think she'd Mm -hmm. be happy using her as an excuse? Who give a shit is my perspective. She's dead. Who give a shit? (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No, but seriously. Do you think she would want this for you? She's dead. (laughs) She doesn't want anything due to not being alive. (laughs) I mean, what with the afterlife and Supernatural, she may as well be looking down and frowning and shaking her head right now. Exactly. We don't know. Every time I think about how in Supernatural... Oh, wait, die, didn't they say she was in hell and Phantom Traveler? Oh my god, you're right. Oh my god, Jess! <laughs> She's looking up, being like, no, Sam, do it. You and I can be together here forever if you continue down your path of, I don't know, something. Yeah, no, I I forgot about that part. Yeah, Sam's saying, like, I know with a clenched jaw about how, like, he's responsible for Jess's death is a lot worse now that I remember that he knows that she is in hell. And it's, like, not because she was a bad person, it's just because she was killed by a demon who dragged her down to hell or something how the fuck does this shit work exactly <laughs> like Nobody mary's knows. in heaven wasn't she killed yeah. in approximately the same way yeah and she was also a ghost for a very long time except she was a benevolent yeah. ghost yeah Supernatural was afraid of women letting mary kill children murderous. 2k22 yeah but okay i guess yeah it doesn't really matter what she thinks but the point is that jess was like the symbol of normality and, like, his way out yeah. of the hunting life. So it's like, well, now you will never get out. Sam says something that this is, like, the first line in the episode where I go, uh, which is, mm. I'm sorry, I am, but life doesn't turn out the way you thought when you were 14 years old. We were never going to be normal. We were never going to get away. Grow up. <laughs> oh, it's miserable. <laughs> it's because it like, is. you know how like a common thing people say is like, if blah blah years old me would look at me now, they would be so proud. Mm. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> but also your life can turn to complete shit tomorrow. And when fourteen year old you looks at that person, they'll be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> So who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait. Everyone should read Thesis 5 by a good soldier on AO3. Which Um, is a thing about. Sam's, like, Stanford self. Sam is 37. And then his 20-year-old Stanford self comes back. Uh. And they talk. (laughs) Oh, I should reread that one. (laughs) Now, young Sam 
has become menacing. And he's like, maybe you're right. Maybe there's no escape. After all. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't say it like that. <laughs> But he says, after all, how can you run from what's inside of you? And there's like a whole thing where like he's flickering. He flickers from one place to another, whatever. Yeah. And his eyes turn yellow. How? Yeah, baby. Absolutely horrible effects, honestly. But you know what? It didn't look good. Emotional impact. Yeah, I thought it, it looked fine. I couldn't tell that there was an issue. Yeah, no, Sam looks, like, horrified at this. Yeah. And I think... Do you think that Sam likes to think that there was, like, a before and after period for him? I think so. Like, because, like, he also gets really upset at Dean saying, like, you always knew there was something wrong with you. Like, I feel like... As much as Sam is, like, currently in a place where he's, like, like, my younger self is, like, stupid and he needs to grow up. Like, first off, like, he doesn't really feel that. He's just, like, trying to, like, squash down, like, the pain that he feels at disappointing his younger self. But also, I think he does like to think of his younger self as, like, a, like, not, like, pure, but just, like, like, a that's a before period person, like. He, like, exists in my memories as he is, and, like, he can't be changed by my present actions. So I think that, yeah. like, seeing the yellow eyes is, like, a corruption of that idea. Yeah. Plus, like, yeah, when he talks to that teacher in After School Special, like, he asks, that guy asks, like, did you ever, like, go off and do your own thing? And Sam's like... I did for a bit, but then I... Did, does he use grow up there as well? Yeah, yeah. So Mr. Y asks, so you've managed to do your own thing then, huh? Sam goes, yeah, for a while, yeah. And I think I went to college because of you, but, you know, people grow up. So it's the same language, but, like, I think that he does view, like, the for a while as, like, a respite, like, a little bubble of time in his life that, like he can keep away from the rest. And also, like, childhood him is, like, a part of him. He can keep away from the rest. But, like, you know, now now childhood him has the yellow eyes and it was, like, we were never going to be normal. We were never going to get away. It is very sad that that the growing up language is used both times. Like, yeah. ugh, you can you can still leave. Like, not now, I guess, because you are in a situation. But, like... I don't, your dreams weren't stupid, and you should you should think about them again. Yeah, the thing about Sam is he's. I mean, we've talked about this before, but you know, a lot of times when you are in a difficult situation or depressed, etc., cetera, mm-hmm. etc., cetera, the mindset tends to be like, "Oh, being hopeless or you know, being sad, being blah blah blah," is the mature yes. uh, perspective, and it's the. It's like everybody else are like deluding themselves by being happy. Uh, Bobby comes back. Apparently, Rufus has been tracking a lot of omens. And, well, there's so many seals that are being broken recently and also incredibly rapidly. They need 66 seals to break, right? Yes. And 666 are present. So, yeah, it's horrible. And I mean... Later, it's revealed that, like, there's, like, true or tree left or whatever. Mm-hmm. And and uh, Sam's like, what, are, what the fuck are the angels doing? And Ruby's like, I don't know. And apparently, they the gaff. And, you know, we know why. It's because they want the apocalypse to happen. Mm-hmm. So, Bobby's looking at this. And he's looking at Dean. And he's looking at this. And he goes, hey, <laughs> what if this is so important That this fucking domestic drama of ours is not really it's not really the right time to be having it. Uh, he says, um, I don't like this any more than you do, but Sam can kill demons. Why do you not like that? I mean, it's I think it's a good thing to be able to kill demons, but whatever. Mm. Um he's got a shot at stopping Armageddon. And Dean says Sacri- so what sacrifice Sam's life, his soul for the greater good, which is, we've talked Ooh. about it. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Times are bad, so let's use Sam as a nuclear warhead. And the thing is, if this is really 
the place where Dean is coming from. It's like, I understand. Except it's not. It's yeah. Not. So yeah, yeah and it's like right. like the drinking demon plot is like an action that Sam's doing to like try to stop the apocalypse. That's like hurting him and like I'd rather stop the apocalypse like okay I disagree with the actions but I understand being against the drinking demon blood but nah but nah that's not where he's coming from Bobby always does this right like look I hate uh, this is like his usual speaking whatever Mm. okay I have a question are you like do you like a Bobby do you care about Bobby? I'm completely neutral on this guy. <laughs> Do people like Bobby? Danica likes Bobby. Is that for real? Yeah. Why? Danica, come here he, to the podcast. Come back and like, tell us why you like Bobby. He, he's nice, I think, was the extent <laughs> of the reasoning. <laughs> She also liked I, Ruby because she's nice and <laughs> maintained this throughout watching up until the end of season seven. And you know what? Real. I mean, Bobby is constantly like a neutral position in this show. Like he exists to give information and to mediate, basically. So, mm-hmm. mm, I don't know. And I think he has his moments, but I just am not. I do not like Bobby. I don't hate him, but I don't like him. And but you know what? Like he does feel embedded enough in the show that like when he dies, it is a big deal. You know, it's mm-hmm. like we are losing a part of the show. We're leaving something behind as we mm-hmm. move to Carver era. But mm-hmm. yeah, all that because he says, "I know you hate me for suggesting it. I hate me for suggesting <laughs> it too." He's so funny. And he says, I love that boy like a son. Like, no, you don't. You love that boy like a co-worker. <laughs> he literally loves that boy I, like, like a co-worker. When he said that, I had to immediately pause so I could, like, laugh and laugh and laugh <laughs> for so long. Like, no, you don't. <laughs> the thing about Bobby is, like, I love, um, I love Sam like a son. But, like, a son that he kind of hates. <laughs> like, yeah, that's his kid, but he's like, ugh. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. like, his kid that he discovered that was his kid, like, later on in the kid's life. Like, and Sam that, is his Adam. <laughs> yeah, like, Sam is his Adam, but instead of, like, thinking, being like, oh, I shall be, like, a cool father... Because I'm trying to impart, like, a good impression on this kid. He's like, I mean, he already grew up without a dad. I don't know why I need to be here. <laughs> like, he's fine. <laughs> and that's Bobby's perspective in life. <laughs> yeah. He's saying, all I'm saying is maybe he's here right now instead of the battlefield. Because we love him too much. Like, wow. Like, God. Like, plenty <laughs> of people do enact, like, abuse or, or like, specifically medical course, abuse yeah. on people because, like, they think it's an act of love or whatever. But boy, is it annoying to hear out loud. <laughs> no, it's just that I don't think Bobby loves Sam. And also, like, <laughs> definitely this is not an act of love. Okay. I retract that. I do think Bobby loves Sam. But... Mm. Like a co-worker. Like, not like a co-worker. Uh, like yeah. a... Like your... Like the kid N- of nephew. someone. Like a nephew. <laughs> the kid of someone. <laughs> well, yeah, <but> like <laughs> a nephew. Yeah. Or like a... The kid of your mom's oldest sister's <laughs> first kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's, like, that's, like, I mean, yeah, I like them, but, like, they're pretty distant, and we see each other once a year, and, like, I don't know, recently, he's around more often, but, uh, <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like Bobby thinks of Sam as, like, there's an obligation of love here, and it comes from the we're family thing. Like, you know, he does think right. we're family, and he loves him, like, he's family, except sometimes you don't like your family that much, so... I, I'm not sure about the obligation thing because when Dean 
comes back, isn't he like, Bobby, what the fuck, weren't you supposed to be looking after Sam the whole <laughs> time? Like, I don't know. <laughs> and Bobby was like, I don't know how Bobby responds, but my understanding is that it's like a, I did not know that was a requirement. <laughs> no, 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 he was like, I tried uh, like he to, but me. I couldn't yeah. contact him, and he tried to go away. And it's like, yeah, that's reasonable. That is reasonable. So I yeah. guess I guess he does have that kind of familial obligation thing. I mean, I the thing is, I insult Supernatural <laughs> as a show to Helen back about how like, oh, their family they don't even like each other that much. Blah blah blah. blah. Like, yeah, I remember like um <laughs> when the Sam and. Uh, Mary C was happening. Mm. I had to talk to myself. I cannot imagine having a conversation like this with any of my family. So, like, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? Anyway, um, yeah, now that we've yeah. mentioned that, we are with Sam and Mary. Sam's like vision is blurry and like he's trying to get to the pitcher of water that they left in the room, but like he's too weak to move which is another reason that someone should have been in the room with him if they were gonna do this but whatever but then mary appears and she's like in like her death outfit so the white nightgown and the blood stain over the abdomen why is this like do you think they I mean, it ends mean, with, like, don't make my death, like, or make my death mean something, right, is how it yeah, ends. Yeah, but, like, do you think John was like, okay, Sam and Dean, let's sit down and talk about how your mom died and looked Sam was when she died? there looking up at the ceiling and also, he like, was Al- six Azazel, Azazel showed it to him in season two. Oh my god, you're right! I'm or so did he sorry, cut away Sam. before the end? I'm ever doubting you. No, or, no, no. I think Azazel showed the, like, lifting Mary up and uh, ceiling, etc. So, uh-huh. yeah, I think that's reasonable. Sorry, Sam. So, she says, poor baby. He notices her and he goes, mom. Which does make me emo that, yeah, I mean, of course he would call her mom, but it still matters to me that he calls her mom. <laughs> and um, I mean... I think, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but, like, Sam calling Mary mom reminds me of how, like, Dean is the preserver of Mary's memory. Yes. More than John. Because, like, if John would talk to Sam about it, it would be, like, Mary was or your mom was. But, Mm. like, Dean is the one who calls Mary, like, mom. Mm -hmm. And so, probably, it was... Sam, who was like, hey, Dean, can you tell us about our mom? And Dean was like, oh, mom was blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. That's why, I don't know, he calls her like this. It's just yeah. all Sam knows of Mary is what he saw in the Azazel vision. Yeah, and what he, he was didn't stole. even get to be in 403. Yeah, he didn't even get to be there. Even that is told to him. Oh, Sam. Sam. He'll get to meet her and the song remains the same, at least. Well, yeah, and he also in season 12, but... That's true. Yeah. That's way later, though. Mary goes, Sam, you look just awful. (laughs) She's so (laughs) funny. Good for her. When Mary says, like, you look just awful, I was like, see? She's just like any mother, for real. (laughs) No. (laughs) <laughs> literally like, like she should have come and been like i hate that haircut is there yeah. more acne on your face it's because you're not sleeping like early enough are you using that cream that i mailed you no why not <laughs> exactly she should have been like what's wrong with your arm why do you have that rash are you taking your anti like are you taking your anti hysterics like she's so- <laughs> she should have said that and sam goes Let's hear it. Go ahead. You're disappointed. You never thought I'd turn out this way. You should have raised a baby girl. I should have been a better son. (laughs) He says, I'm a piss poor excuse for a son. He says, 
Your heart is broken. Am I close? Oh, I'm so miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so miserable. But, yeah, like, I guess Uriel did say in 407 that, like, what you're doing is specifically, like, bad to your because mom. Because it's what right? you killed your mom, yeah. I feel like Sam's probably been having this feeling for a long time already, like... Yeah, like, am I breaking my mom's heart right now? Ugh. Sorry, Sam. Mary says, not at all. You're doing the right thing, Sam. And Sam just looks up with so much surprise and, like, naked hope that, like, maybe he he will, like, receive comfort and be, like, redeemed in this moment. And it's a lot! It's a lot. (sighs) She says, what you're doing is brave. You're not being crazy. You're being practical. Sam, I am so proud of you. I don't... Do you think that he thinks Mary would actually think this? Or is this mostly just his brain coming up with something to soothe him? It's just... I think what it is is that there is, like, the person who, if they said, you're doing the right thing, Sam that would mm. soothe him the most is yes. Mary. And so his brain is putting yeah. him in that situation. Yeah, I agree. Especially because he's recently gotten into that you can only trust family mindset. Yeah. And like, John is dead and hated his ass. Dean has just done this to him. So he has to conjure up like Mary, like the last person in his subset of people he can trust in order to like, shape like her words to as he said to him it is interesting that young sam jessica is the topic Mm -hmm. but jess is not part of the hallucinations yeah i think maybe a part of it is that if jess comes in and it's like it is fine that you're doing this sam like even sam's brain is like nah (laughs) yeah i don't know about that one folks (laughs) <laughs> like when you're at night and you're like daydreaming about situations. Yeah. And you're, you're like, no, that's too unrealistic. Even for my fucking like night daydreams. Yeah. <laughs> for real. You've met Mary. What do you think she would actually think about this? Honestly, I think she would be like, yeah. Mary in season 12 is portrayed as incredibly practical and mm. not as bogged down by like, Moral obligations as dictated by family. Right. I mean, I feel like working for the men of letters is much worse than drinking demon blood. Yeah, exactly. Mary was also like hiding things from Sam and Dean. Like the gun thing was a situation. And also, like, she doesn't know these kids. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, she doesn't know these people. And that's a whole, like, that's a big point in season 12 that, like, I mean, when I left, I had a small baby and a toddler. Mm-hmm. And now you're, I don't know, 47? I don't know how old you <laughs> are. <laughs> um, yeah, how, how, however old Dean is. He's that old. And Sam is like 30 four years seven. younger. 37. He's 37. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And like, I don't know. We can talk much about like, what would Mary think? What would Mary think? But the thing is, the Mary and Sam's brain, who is his mother, who knows him and understands him and loves him. That's not the Mary of season 12. Mm -hmm. But I think that that actually like allows for a more empathetic point of view because she's not Mm -hmm. seeing it as like a family betrayal. Like my baby boy. Yeah. (laughs) Like, Dean is seeing this as, like, you lied to me and we're family and that's wrong. To Mary, it's mm-hmm. like, there's a guy here who drinks demon blood. I mean, it doesn't look too bad. Yeah. But also, Mary of season 12 exists in a completely different time than, you know, Sam and Dean right now. So Right. And by that, I mean, like, she grew up at a different time. And mm-hmm. also... She is in a different time. So, mm-hmm. like, maybe 2009 was just a rough time for drug addiction in the United States. I mean, it's currently still a rough time. It's always a this rough time. Trip. Sam goes, but Dean, 
And Mary says, your brother doesn't understand. I was raised a hunter from a long line. We understand that there are going to be hard choices and we do what we have to to get the job done. Which, I mean, I feel like, didn't you say, like, very recently that... I feel like, like, all the things that we were, like... And why doesn't Supernatural, like, talk about this regarding Sam in season four? Like, like all of them are happening in 421. Like, I feel like I brought up, like, hey, what about Jess? And you brought up, like, hey, what about Mary and the Campbells uh, when Sam was talking about the Winchesters being cursed? And it's, like, it's crazy that, like, it seems like for, like, this episode and the two before that, like, the script writers maybe actually like read each Talk other's to each scripts, other. yeah. like, and actually worked to build something that was consistent and built up over time. Like, wow, that's a new high for Supernatural. And like the thing about this episode is that neither, like, none of the other seasons prior felt like this when you were going into the last episode. You know? Yes. Like season three, you know, like the penultimate season three app feel like this. Um, season two, no. Season one, no. Absolutely not. This <laughs> is the first one where it's like, okay, so we're gearing up for something. And yeah. it is fun. And if you told me this is the penultimate season, I would be like, yeah, that makes absolute sense. Like they're, mm-hmm. they're doing this because that next season is going to wrap everything up in a big bow. Because yep. it's going to be the final one. And then it wasn't. Yeah. Slication. She says, yes, our family is cursed, but you have the power to turn it into a gift. You can use it against them. Ugh. Like, I don't it, Like, to Sam, like, the family curse always came from John and from being a Winchester, which meant, like, an endless cycle of, like, revenge and anger that he's been caught up in. And Mary's, like... Well, but you're also a Campbell, and, like, we've been hunters for a long time, and, like, we're practical, and we know how to, like, use curses or whatever like this to our advantage, and that's- it's nice that Sam gets this. Despite all of your family, like, being dead or, like, betraying you right now, like, there are all these people that you never got to meet who are your family still, and they would understand you, and- they would, like, support yeah. this. So, Sam asks for revenge, and Mary says, no, for justice. Yay! Exciting! It gets to me. It gets to me that, like, yeah. Sam's whole thing has been revenge for, like, four seasons. But, like, Mary is like, no, like, there is something else, and it comes from my people, and you can do it. And, like, didn't... I mentioned in our It's a Terrible Life recording that, like, Sam immediately wants to be a hunter. And he wants to do it because he wants to, like, help people. So there's, like, yeah. this idea that, like, Sam without, like, the Winchester upbringing would be, like, a hunter for justice. And, like, this Mary hallucination is, yeah. like, providing that perspective for him again. Yeah. Like, there is a reason why you're doing this that is removed from the toxicity of how you were brought up. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sam! Sam. <laughs> but even the, the nicest hallucination is yeah. still gonna... Yeah, Sam goes, what's in me, Mom? It's... And Mary goes, evil. And you know it. So we're, yeah, we're not even, we're still not, we still don't have the the breadth of perspective that I would like from Supernatural regarding this. And Sam goes, like, what if it's stronger than me? And, like, I think Mary's looking away and he goes, like, no, look at me. What if Dean's right? But, like, Sam is gonna contain Lucifer in his mind and then jump into that pit, right? Like, he is stronger than this thing that he considers evil right now, which I still don't know what it does to you, but apparently it does something to you besides make you have powers and whatever. But yeah, yeah. Oh, Sam. And Mary goes, Dean can never know how strong you are because Dean is weak. Slay. (laughs) It's so funny. And Sam does look kind of disbelievingly at her at this 
I think this is his moment where his brain's, it's like, even this daydream is a little unrealistic. Let's wind yeah. it back. <laughs> exactly. Um, but she says that Dean locked him in here because he's terrified and in over his head. And Sam just has to leave him and kill Lilith on his own. Sam says, just in a very resolved voice, like, he already knew this a year ago or whatever. He goes, even if it kills me. Mary goes, make my death mean something. I'm counting on you, Sam. Don't let anyone or anything get in your way. Not even Dean. Ugh. Yeah, because, like... Mary's death and the way that's related to Demon Blood has been an idea throughout the season. And she's reiterating, like, what he said in Metamorphosis, which is, like, what, like, there's, like, demon blood inside me, and, like, I can never scrub it out, but, like, I'm trying to make the best of this situation. So, yeah, reaffirming that shit. She, like, strokes his hair... And then kisses him on the cheek. And... So oh. leans into it. I mean, there mm. it was like, prior to that, she has been like stroking his hair a little bit. Yeah, the whole time, but... And he has been leaning into it. And... Yeah. 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 Mm. Mm. And now we got to uh, a totally different vibe. Okay, I mean, uh, the entire uh, Mary and Sam scene, as I've said, made me really emotional. um, Because it's like, you know, everything we've talked about, this is Sam comforting himself with the thought of his mom. So I'm like sobbing, I'm crying. I paused the video to be like, okay, I need to get myself together to be able to watch the rest of this episode. And eventually, Uh I do. Very nice, very nice. I press play, and I am immediately bombarded by this weird sex foreplay that Dean and Cass are doing. And I'm like, what is happening? Because like, the thing is, I mean, I know this um, scene exists. I know that it exists in this episode. I went in knowing that this is going to happen. The last time I think I've watched this scene was in a, like... Um, scrubbing through episodes, trying to find it to, for an AMV or something. Of course. You know? So, uh, when I last watched this, it was in a Destiel mindset. Like, I was already thinking of Destiel. So, while watching it, I'm like, wow, what a thing. But, um, looking back to that, I'm like, no, but like, I thought that because I was already in the mindset, right? I already was mm-hmm. thinking of Destiel. So, of course, I'm gonna think, this is so Destiel because, I am uh, thinking that of everything that I see of them at that point, because it's the lens that I'm using to view it. But now that, like, you know, this episode is so serious and so much is happening, I'll probably be like, yeah, it's just a plot thing. And, you know, it's not like Desiel. They're stalking, whatever. I went in and I'm like, this is, like, whatever this is, is even more intense, sexual, and sensual than I ever previously thought. <laughs> Honestly, what the fuck? Why did they put it here? I mean, I know why they put it here. Yeah, it's like, it does have plot relevance. <laughs> like, it is just such a wild, wild thing to put in an episode. Yeah. Honestly. I just, the lighting does a lot for Cass looking like the most devastatingly attractive guy around. Yeah, I think I've talked about it before, right? The whole, like, they put Cass in the dark and quiet to be like, give him mystery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Except but instead it just seems like really an illicit high. love affair. Yeah. <laughs> also, we need to bring up here something that I brought up with you. And you were like, we need to talk about it in the podcast. Mm-hmm. Which is that Honey podcast theory. <laughs> yes. So to those unaware, I mean it's not that famous of a um theory, I think. Mm. It was just like a couple a couple posts here and there, maybe. I'm not sure. Um 
But like way back, I probably saw a post that was like, why was like Cass the angel being sent in season four of Supernatural? Like, and the way he approaches Dean, we have the, you know, the meeting where he's very mm. like excited to be there. You know, he's sweet even. And then mm. the second episode is like, well, one of the most sexual scenes in Super, <laughs> like one of the like most Desia like sexual tension scene in Supernatural, and then and then after that, it's like he's trying to connect to Dean, you know, he's trying to comfort him. He sends Dean to the past, and then that ends with him like putting his hand on Dean's shoulder and like you know they share this look, and it's really intense. And then he talks about his feelings, and it's like. Okay, but like, was Cass like supposed to do this because he was supposed to win to win Dean's affections over? Mm. So yeah, that is something that has been bouncing around in my head. Like, what if Cass is a honeypot? Have we considered? Okay. Well, apparently we have. Yeah. What do you think of this? Do you think it makes sense? Do you think? I think it makes sense i mean the the straightforward narrative is just that he got attached despite himself and his superiors pulled him back whatever yeah. whatever but i do think that it's like after they saw that dean seemed somewhat attached back they were like we can use this we can keep sending this thing yeah i mean i have been thinking about the fact that when Cass was kind of demoted because mm. he could, likes Dean too much and then they made Yuria like the lead they still made Cass fucking tag along <laughs> in on the head of a pin Cass was still there and Cass was still like on Yuriel's side even though Yuriel was doing all the talking when they first enter that motel room where they get Dean from right mm. and it's like what's the point of him even being in there he he says one sentence that like Uriel cuts off immediately, right? The rest of it is like Uriel can say that, Uriel can do that. Why is Cass here? And the reason why Cass is there is because Dean likes him mm -hmm. and will probably be able to soften him up. When Dean was like, "Oh, I'll talk to Cass alone," and Uriel's like, "Okay, I'll go. I'll head upstairs." <laughs> yeah. And it's like, did they plan that shit? Where they like, oh, we're gonna have a good cop, bad cop, and then the good cop is gonna be Cassiel because Dean already likes him. I think it is likely. Like, I mean, Dean agrees to do the torture because of how yeah. Cass tells him about it and says that there's no other, no other option, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, and like, I don't know here. Mm -hmm. I mean, allegedly. Dean has been calling out for two hours and I'm thinking like, okay, so what was happening in those two hours where they were like, we we can't send Castiel down there because like last time he almost stole Dean and they were like, well, who else are we going to send? Do you think anyone else would listen, would be listened to by Dean? Like, who do you think right. could convince Dean to do this? Only Castiel could. Yeah, but he's <laughs> fucking wants to whatever. <laughs> so, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think Cass went in specifically instructed by Heaven to be like, you're going in there because Dean will like you or to make mm. Dean like you. But I do think at some point, the liking has been considered in the tactics. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, see, he has this weakness, he likes you, is like a thing that Uriel says. So like mm -hmm. Heaven knows it for a fact. Yeah. And like, Pretty much before Dean even knows it. So, like, I think they can also sense if Dean likes Cass. Mm. Even before either of them know it. Dean likes Cass, right? I, I wasn't sure of it, but I think in this episode, I was like, yeah, I think so. There's a line here where he says, God, you're a dick, DC. Yes, exactly. And the fact that yeah. there's, like, a former... That means that there's a former version of Cass that he liked. I like that line because it's kind of like... He's not saying, like, y you should change your mind. He's like, <laughs> I understand that you can't, but good lord, I hate it. Mm. 
you know, he extends more generosity of thought <laughs> towards Cass than Sam, like, this entire episode. Yeah. Demon's bad, Angel's good, I guess. Yeah. Dean is in the, you know, the yard. Bobby's salvage yard. Dean is just standing there. And then, I uh, turn around. Cass is there. He's under a lamp. He's under a lamp. It's so yeah. cute. And yeah, as Crystal said, the lighting in this scene really does wonders for this guy. He is so beautiful. I forget <laughs> that like a big part of why Cass appealed so much is because he's just good looking. <laughs> like Yeah. <laughs> like Dean, have we considered this? He pr- probably had. But and also like there's like fucking scrap metal behind him. That looks like wings. Mm. It's so cute. Dean um, is like, I've been here two hours. I've been screaming, whatever. And Cass is like, well, what can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Why did you do- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why not? <laughs> he says, what do you want? And Dean says, well... Uh, you can start with what happened in Illinois. And yeah, um, Cass is pretending he doesn't know what the fuck Dean is talking about. But Dean is like, you know what it is. Like, you, well, I yeah, don't know, Cass disappeared on me. It was nothing of import, which yeah. I love. I love when Cass says import. It's great. Exactly. And he looks yeah, like he's walking towards Dean while he's talking. And he has his like hands in his pockets and he's yeah. like looking over his shoulder a bit like like while he's walking and it's sort of like a I don't want heaven to hear but also like a look I'm so casual I'm so casual like it's not even a big deal what you're talking yeah. about thing it's great yeah. and Dean goes you got <laughs> you got ass reamed in heaven but it was not of import and Cass says Dean and then he like does a turning by mm. your shoulder thing that you mentioned like he's looking behind his back and then he faces Dean and he just goes I can't I'm sorry uh, 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 and like, big we wet have, sad we eyes have, this is like it's cr- like we have so many like reaction shots of Dean mm. I think uncharacteristically so do you think Robert Singer was a dusty intruder from the very <laughs> beginning <laughs> Like, what's happening for real? Why are they so close together? Why did they hire a crane? Like, what's <laughs> happening? Literally, like, that's a lot of money, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Why did they hire a crane? <laughs> oh, God. Well, Cass says, uh, he starts walking away. I love how every time Cass is in a scene, we will just talk stage directions to hell and back. But Cass starts walking away. So his back is towards Dean and Dean is following him with his eyes. And he goes, get to the reason you really called me. It's about Sam, right? Which is a line in and your, your, your dog, dog AMV. AMV. <laughs> we keep on bringing this shit up, but that truly is a fucking AMV of all time. I am unsatisfied with some of the cuts in that thing, so maybe I'll remake it. Rework it? Yeah. Yeah. Could be fun. Yeah. Dean asks about if Sam can actually stop the apocalypse and all that crap. Cass says, possibly, but as you know, he'd have to take certain steps. And he turns back to look at Dean with his, so, his eyes are so wet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What is going on with this guy? Like, what did the makeup department do to me? She called. I don't so know. Maybe it was allergy season. Exactly. Like this entire time, we're like, Cass has so uh, pathetic eyes, and it's like he. There's just dandelions, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, but okay. Cass says here, consuming the amount of blood that it would take to kill Lilith would change your brother forever. That's not Most likely, true, though, is it? That didn't that happen. Is, I mean, yeah. He got rebooted a little bit, right? 
Like huh. at the end of season four, they were gonna get um like light whatever that thing. And then he got rebooted. And like okay. I think they mentioned it in season five, episode one, that like, oh I got rebooted. Oh wait, well Cass gets rebooted. Cass gets rebooted. Like, Sam gets rebooted. They end up on a plane. Sam also gets rebooted? Yeah. Oh. Huh. I don't follow enough Sam girls. <laughs> Yeah. I should have known that. Okay. So, it is true then? What do you mean it is true? That the consuming the amount of blood it would take to kill a wolf would change Sam forever. He just gets rebooted, so he's fine. I mean, I don't know if it's true, because we don't have forever to find out, but... That's yeah. true. And Cass is currently very much under Heaven's thumb during this convo. Yeah. But do you think he's lying? Um... Because I feel like him being like, Dean, I can't. That's not a lie. Yeah, but like that's when he's facing Dean and walking towards him in his like secrets voice. But when he turns back around and like goes back to his normal voice, it's his like business as usual thing. So like, I don't, this think, that's, I don't think he's in this the same true. mode as he was in the Dean, I can't. Like for all we know, yeah, the Dean, I true. can't was like kind of a warning about the rest yeah. of what he was going to say. Like, Dean I Can't is kind of his, like, fourth wall break from his yeah. performance of being the Angel Castiel here to deliver information. Right. But, I don't I guess there's no reason that it would be untrue. I mean, the reason would be that, like, this is the thing that would, that Cast and Heaven know would cause Dean to finally agree to take up the mantle. But, like... Yeah. I think, I think by the rules of Supernatural that it makes sense that that would be the case. Yeah. But also, like, don't, don't Sam's eyes turn black in 422? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, Cass says, most likely, Sam would become the next creature that you would feel compelled to, to kill. Boo! And then he starts doing this thing where he just keeps on saying Dean's name. And then, you know, yeah! Goes, yeah. He goes, there's no reason this would have come to pass, Dean. We believe it's you, Dean, Dean. not your brother. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah i think he, he read, read like, like a, a like a flirting <laughs> manual yeah exactly <laughs> he, he picked up a cosmo magazine and he was like okay how to get him to have rumbumptious sex with you do people still say rumbumptious <laughs> whatever it was 2009 it probably did um under five easy words so yeah yeah he says um, we believe it's you, Dean, not your brother. The only question for us is whether you're willing to accept it. Stand up and accept your role. You're the one who will stop it. And at this point, he is back to, like, facing Dean. Oh, and, yeah, he's like, walking closer yeah. and closer on the <laughs> we believe it's you, Dean shit. And we get reaction shots, right? Like, cast face, Dean face. I don't know. I have. I only took screenshots of Cass. Probably Dean was there. No, no, but like, what I'm saying is, we don't notice first how they're standing, and then we get like a outside oh, yeah. shot of both of them on screen, and they are so close together. It's so funny. Yeah, we're back to reaction shots, and it's like there's just this. I'm so sorry. There's just this shot of Cass just looking at Dean, and it's like. What is happening? Wait, I'll I'll screen. Is it the one it, I sent you? <laughs> is it? <laughs> is it the one? Yes, yeah, the one you sent me. This one. What is this? What is like? Sincerely, what's going on? I don't know. Wait, who is this? Why are you looking at him like that? The audience can't even see it. He's just looking at dude, and he has a chin. Is what's happening? Honestly, not to give Mishi Collins. Well, anything, but... Yeah. <laughs> like, what? The, he literally went into that studio and was like, I'm going to be gay <laughs> today in front yeah. of this camera. And he was. Yeah, that is appreciated. If only he could do anything else right. Dean says, if I do this, then Sam Sammy doesn't have to. And Cass says, if it gives you comfort to see it that way. <laughs> Which is, well, one, an insane thing to say. And two, an insane thing for Dean to hear and be like, okay. <laughs> yeah. What is Dean doing? What is Dean doing? 
I mean, I, it's like a desperation well, thing, right? He's, yeah, he's desperate, desperate to find thing. anything. And like mm-hmm. at this point, Cass can say anything and be like, will this work? I don't know, probably, but maybe not. He'll still be like, well, let's try that, probably. Mm-hmm. But it's a big ask. It's not like Cass is asking, like, a small exchange for this. But he doesn't, like, as I said, have no idea what it is Dean's actually supposed to do, though. And that's the big, like, that's the big reason why it's such a big ask. Like, mm. if if there was a clear outline, a clear contract of what is going to go down, then it's like, yeah, okay, we mm. can define the risks. But here it's like, mm-hmm. sure, whatever, man. And Dean says, oh, God, you're a dick these days. Which, mm. again, is like the... Like, he's enough of a presence and personality in Dean's life that there are versions of him that Dean has different opinions on. Like, that's something. Yeah. And then K- Dean walks away. They fuck nasty. <laughs> no, like, earlier when Cass walks away, Dean is, like, over his shoulder. And now, like, Cass is over Dean's shoulder. It's a whole thing. This is, like, the only scene where we go this in depth with the fucking whatever. But it really is so important. This is vital. It's vital. (laughs) (laughs) To talk about this scene. I mean, maybe not every Cass scene ever, but, like, this scene specifically, it's crazy. Dean says, fine, I'm in. And Cass is like, you give yourself over wholly to the service of God and his angels. (laughs) <laughs> which is truly a crazy statement and mm. i mean i'm sure dean is going through a lot mentally in this scene but i'm so <laughs> mad at him and i do give a shit so yeah <laughs> let's just focus on how fucking weird the fucking words here are mm. but yeah dean is just like yeah exactly and has goes say it <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> oh well, uh, well. And then, yeah dean is like turns around kind of like disbelievingly like are you really gonna make me do this and mm. Cass just looks at him well again this face is like what are we doing here like what are we doing here well, honest, what are we doing here wait i'll screenshot it wait. again and i'll send it to you because it's crazy. Like, what? Like, the, every single um, face Cass makes in this scene, he looks like he is so sad and he's about yeah. to cry. He has so much Aww. distress in all of his life. I and mean, he does not want this for Dean. Yeah, that's true. And he is the one to lead him into it by, yeah. like, manipulating his. Like his misguided concern for Sam and all that shit. So yeah, yeah, he is sad. <laughs> it's a sad moment for him. Yeah, he is the serpent in this situation. You know what I mean? Like mm. the whole point is to like tempt Dean to fucking yeah. get here. So yeah, maybe guess mm. is a honeypot. Who knows? Yeah. Dean starts walking back, and he goes. I swear. <laughs> I mean, I give myself over wholly to serve God, God and, you guys. and you guys. Cass continues the oath, which is you swear to follow his will and his word as swiftly and as obediently as you did your own father. What is Cass this? Said, now it's a personal. <laughs> and you made it personal, baby. Yeah, he's been on Earth for two thousand years, but his only the only models of fatherhood he studied in depth were like God and John God Winchester, and, John and he Winchester. was just like, "That's just normal." Like I put this in all of the oaths that I make people make because I just assumed that their dad was like John Winchester. Actually, like this entire scene, Dean also looks like you know he's like distressed a little bit. Mm. And he's apprehensive. And, you know, for obvious reasons, this is a big ask. And he's saying a big yes. Mm -hmm. And this is the part where he, like, puts his game face on. And he just goes, yes, I swear. Now what? And Cass is like, whatever. We keep on going. (laughs) Cass is looking at him like, well, really, Cass is looking at him like, well, yeah. Um, (laughs) Dean goes, now what? And Cass just goes, now you wait. And we call you when it's time. 
And then <laughs> they were standing so close together, staring at each other. And the camera like just stays there. And then mm-hmm. it starts to zoom out. Yes. And if you thought they were standing close together, <laughs> wait until it zooms out and shows you all of this free space they have <laughs> in this <laughs> fucking yard. <laughs> It's so funny. And like, they just stand still for a long time. And then Dean shifts a little bit, like looks down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Cass is still just standing there. And we have said this over and over again in the past. That whenever Cass talks, he is so efficient. Mm -hmm. He is, he gets there. He says his piece. He, sometimes he doesn't even give a shit what the other party says. And he's out. He's out. Yeah. He teleports just out of there immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every cast scene ends with him like disappearing, basically. Yeah. And in this scene, it's like we're waiting for him to disappear and he just stands there and looks yeah. at Dane. Yeah. And it, I think, well, one, maybe he's waiting for them to fuck that <laughs> We need to take this seriously or do it. Yeah. But- he's like, okay, Cosmo Magazine said step five. <laughs> We fuck nasty. Like, is it happening? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no, but the, I think what they're trying to convey here, aside from these two are gonna fuck at some point in this show, is like Cass is waiting for something. And mm. like maybe he feels like he hasn't said enough yet. And so he's here. Because every single time, like Cass leaves when he said everything he wants to say. And now mm-hmm. he's still here, meaning that he probably still wants to say something. Except, you know, Dean, I can't. The thing is, like, I, have you noticed how we didn't even talk about any, like, thing substantial about Cass's emotions in this scene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what emotions? He has big, wet, sad eyes. <laughs> yeah, didn't I, I say <laughs> that he's literally too hot for me to, like... <laughs> think about him in depth because I just when I'm like what does Cass feel like his face appears in my mind and I'm like oh my god I need to fuck that and then that's it no but like like I mean I was also earlier well you know I was we were waiting in the call I was like okay but how are we going to talk about Cass because like we kind of know how we're going to approach Dean and Bobby and Sam so like okay but like how about Cass and it's like, I don't know. He has a scene later with Anna. But even that is like, it's kind of nothing. It's not nothing. And then, but it's yeah. not nothing in the Anna part. But the yeah, part, my it's thoughts like, during that scene were just for Anna. Yeah, but the cast part is like, <laughs> is he also hot? He's well for Anna. Well, like, what's going on? <laughs> I mean, what it was is like, if any other angel calls Anna, Anna would be like, oh, I'm definitely going to get into trouble. But she trusts Cass to mm-hmm. um, not get her into trouble, and then he dies. And it's because they have a they have a they have a rapport. Mm. Is is Cass your just go to rapport guy? <laughs> like it's like wait, who yeah, does, they're like who his autistic swagger has everyone <laughs> swooning. Like exactly. let's get Cass in here. Well, that scene is over, and I'm exiting yeah. the fucking. VLC media player of uh, <laughs> Supernatural season for episode 21 that I only pulled out for that scene so I can say the exact blockings uh, one scene at one fucking movement at so a time. true and by VLC media player you mean legal site Netflix <laughs> where, appara- where suddenly Supernatural is available in Netflix Philippines it just exactly. is don't think about it don't think about it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> We're back at the panic room and Sam is seeing like his veins turn black and the color yeah. like spread across his hands and up his arms and then he looks in the mirror and then like they're spreading through his face as well. He just does not enjoy seeing this and he's calling out for help we cut up to bobby and dean who are hearing all of this but still having a regular conversation i do think that even if bobby doesn't bring it up or anything like dean is already having the thoughts of maybe this is a bad idea yeah because um in the first time that like we pan out and sam is screaming 
it's also to Dean's face first. Right. And in that one, it's like he's steely. And he's like, oh, how long is it going to go? How long is it going to be like that before he's back? And, then, you know, that one is kind of like a... He's still very resolved in his anger. He's, like, disconnecting himself from the situation. And, like, that's not Sam who's screaming. So, I don't give a shit. Mm. But, like, the, this one, the pan here is, like... Like, he's starting to think, like, uh-oh. That's, that don't... is actually Sam screaming, I think. Yeah, okay. I think that he is more aware that it's Sam, but I don't yeah. think that he's having second thoughts about this course of action. I think. Oh it's yeah, more no, no just the, like, oh, oh, it's not like yeah. about the action. It's just like, like someone this in is there gonna is be suffering. unpleasant yeah. for me while I medically abuse Sam. Yeah, while yeah. drinking alcohol, Bobby goes, "What? Like you willingly sign up to be the angel's bitch?" And. Okay, it's transcribed as angels with the apostrophe after the S, so like the multiple angels is bitch, but he just says it as angels, which sounds like an L apostrophe S, and given that like, we just saw that go down with Cass, like, well, Slay. that was sex. <laughs> I mean, uh, like the thing is, if this was an if that scene happened in any other episode, we would probably do a bit more focus on the, like, why is it kind of like a sexualized aspect? Blah, 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 what this is. It's just that I hate him so much this episode. And I just, I can't also fair him, like, any thought. You know what I mean? Mm. Is that bad? Should we? No, I, I say that all the time. <laughs> I think you're allowed to say that too. Well, yeah. This is yeah. what's happening. And then Bobby goes, sorry, do you prefer sucker? This is how you this is how you use gender affirming language for your trans family, coworkers, and friends. <laughs> okay, both of these are sexual things. Like sucker yeah, is like sucker you're is, blowing yeah. cast and yeah. bitch is like he's fucking he's you in fucking the ass. You. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he's just maybe he's just like, oh, sorry, I don't, I don't know if anal is something you do. Let's switch to a, a different sex act that I described. <laughs> Wait, that's so funny. He's like, what? are you the angel's bitch? And then he looks at these face and he's like, mm, maybe around soccer. <laughs> and he's like, mm, is it just a handy? What's going on? <laughs> is he your handler? <laughs> yeah. He's surprised that Dean would trust the angels now, and Dean's like, uh, no, I don't. They come on like shady politicians from planet Vulcan. I don't know you Star know, Trek so good, but I think that Cass and Spock are brothers in a no, way, right? That's, that's the th uh, yes, it's true. Uh, I saw this uh, Tumblr post once that's like, Cass is definitely like Spock, and... Dean is kind of like Kirk, but not for the reasons he think he he is for other reasons, and I <laughs> agree with that completely. But I do find it fascinating because, like, the angels Dean has seen, and specifically the ones that like he is talking about here. So excluding Anna, mm. is uh, Cass, yes. Zachariah, Uriel. and Uriel, right? Mm -hmm. And like Uriel and Zachariah definitely do not act like Vulcans, like mm. at all. So like. This is purely a casting. Zachariah definitely acts like a shady politician. Yeah, but yeah. Cass is the only one who acts like a Vulcan. And not like, I mean, I don't mean like like Spock. I mean like mm. like a Vulcan. Because their whole there's a whole speaking thing going on with that one. Uh, yeah, so. Okay, yeah. I don't know, I find it fascinating that Cass is like his main like vision of a... Of an angel, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah, first day, one and all that. Key day rights for Castiel. <laughs> for real. And Dean says that he had to do it because there was no other option. It's either trust the angels or let Sammy trust a demon. He Sammy's a lot this episode and... Because he does it to Cass too. Like he says, oh, if I do this, Sammy doesn't have to. And, like, first of all, you've lost Sammy rights. And, like, secondly, it, I think it's another way to distance the Sam in the basement from, like, 
the, like, pure, good Sammy, like, kid brother in his mind. No, 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 no. I think no? it's the opposite. I think it's uh, Sammy is the little kid and Sammy is the baby. And Wait, yeah, a, no, that's a baby, you have power over to dictate mm. their actions. So it's. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's like separating like that Sam to Sammy. It's okay. It's, it's like imposing Sammy, that authority. Yeah. yeah. Of mm. like, you're a little kid who doesn't know what he's doing. And yeah. I am the big brother who knows what's up. Doesn't he know he's literally shorter than Sam? Like, maybe he should <laughs> think about that. <laughs> what did we call him the other episode? This ginormous. Is ginormous. Like, that's literally ginormous, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> Bobby's like, okay, I see your point. And then they notice that there hasn't been pain screaming for help and stop in the basement. And they're like, oh, I think something's up. Let's go down and check. Which, like, yeah, logical, but does mean that it, that, it's been, like, it's, like, five seconds of not screaming, so it means it's been non-stop pain, like, even during the yeah. Mary hallucination, like, what? I mean, probably not, but, like, during the Mary hallucination, Dean was apparently outside. That's true. Um, <laughs> doing something with a crane, and Bobby, <laughs> the gaff, so. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so they go downstairs, and they look in, and Sam's having a seizure on the floor. And Dean goes, what if he's faking? And Bobby goes, you really think he would? And Dean goes, I think he'd do anything. Like, fuck off. The thing is, if if someone has stayed there with Sam, I think you will know. Like, that he's not faking. And if he was, you will know also. You know? Yeah. you're seeing him. And, like, this, like, is he faking thing is caused by the fact that, like, Dean is looking into this room for, like, the first time, you know? Yeah. He doesn't know what the, like, usual current state of Sam is. Yeah. And, okay, well, it's like, he's faking so that we open the door open the to go door. in and check on him and then he'll escape. Like, I mean, this is due to the fact that you locked him in a room without his consent. Like, the fact that he would have to fake in order to escape you doing this to is maybe something you should think about. Also, he was screaming, like, the whole time, right? Yeah. So, I don't know. It's... Yeah. Uh, Horrible. Like, everything Yeah, and they were like, this is no cause for concern. He's just going through hallucinations, and we think that leaving him there to deal with that all by himself is the right thing to do. With a fucking bucket on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. And he can't reach the water that he wants to drink because he is too weak. Too weak. But, you know, whatever. I mean, you're not going to kill him because of the fucking, like actual withdrawals of like he's gonna die of dehydration <laughs> first at this point yeah yeah like he's sweating buckets right now yeah. like he needs water ugh whatever uh, like Sam starts like like it's like an invisible force that's like throwing him against the wall and stuff and at this, they're like, okay, he can't fake that, so let's go inside now. Which means that, like, they would have stayed or left if yeah. it wasn't this. Because Dean says, like, I think he'd do anything. And Bobby's just like, yeah, agreed, bud. Like, oh. I'm just thinking of, like, a situation where Sam dies and he's just lying there. And Dean is like, oh, is he really dead or is he just faking it? <laughs> <laughs> But whatever, like, people people can become better people, and I think that Dean should have the chance, but I don't think he does become a better person, so thanks, Jenny. There, well, I think there are going to be more breathing room for him mm-hmm. in the future, but you throw him in an intense situation, it's always going to be like this. Mm. And the situations will change in type. Mm. And also, 
the um, subjects of his uh, horribleness will change. Mm. Honestly, sometimes it's like, maybe it's good that Cass becomes a permanent in this show. Because at least, like, there's someone to share <laughs> the, the burden of being around, <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah, like, Sam gets yelled at 50% less because Cass is getting yelled at the rest of the time. And, yeah. you know, Cass, Cass isn't there a lot of the time, so a lot of it goes to his voicemail, and Dean <laughs> feels better after it, and Cass deletes that shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he has no bars. He didn't even receive it. <laughs> yeah, he's in heaven. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a very cynical interpretation of team free will, but it feels correct in this moment because Dean is a piece of shit right yeah. now. They go in. They have to pin him down. They have to get like a belt between his teeth so he doesn't like bite like his mouth off or whatever. And then they like secure him to the bed with like chains and belts and shit to prevent yeah to like prevent him from being thrown around the room, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Bobby says, you know, we got a time down for his own safety. And Dean says, let's just get it over with. <laughs> yeah. Hatred and also biting. When the hallucination starts, like when Sam wakes yeah. up, like you said, like, you think that it's real Dean. Yeah. And like, I thought it was real Dean. And I like wrote down like in my notes, like, I'm glad they had someone waiting for him to wake up because to wake up chained up like that with no explanation, it's completely at alone, no yeah. window, knowing your screams will be ignored will be so terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they literally did leave him down they there to wake up alone. alone. To wake up alone. And on <laughs> to the point that <laughs> Sam's brain <laughs> made Yeah, like, needed to come goodness. up with an explanation to make him feel better so he doesn't lose it. Sam wakes up. Uh, Dean is there. He tugs at his chains and mm. Dean just goes, like, we had to. The demon of blood flinging around the room. And then he goes, tell me something, Sam. Why did you do this to yourself? Yeah, and you Sam, had a pretty positive interpretation of that line. I think I immediately just got angry at the way that blame was being assigned I mean, in the yes. sentence. But you're right that for Dean, this is for like Dean, a step to forward. Reach out. Yeah. Because he never let Sam explain before. Sam goes, you know why. And Dean says, uh, you're right. Kill Lilith, right? The big excuse. But why? What? Revenge, right? And Sam says, of course. Which, like, what was... Did the Mary scene mean nothing to you? I thought we were doing something there. I mean... This is, like... You have to remember that, like, these are hallucinations. And these are, like, different parts of Sam's psyche talking back to him, you know? Like, this yeah. is, like, a different train of thought that he's running with in this one. Mm -hmm. And that one is a yeah. different train of thought that he's running with. So, I suppose so. Yeah. And Dean is like, revenge for what? For sending me to hell? Do you happen to notice I'm back alive and kicking? So what's the point? And like, like this line is like, I think it's nice because it's like, because mm -hmm. if the plea is like, Sam, please stop doing this, which, well, I mean, that's kind of the plea, the kind version of the plea that Dean is doing. Having this conversation of like, why are you doing it for this? Well, you don't have to do it for that. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I think that is an approach to do it that isn't, you know what? Because I was like, it's a better approach. But like, any approach is better than whatever <laughs> the fuck this is. But it is a better approach. Though, I mean, I don't know if this is like, if this hallucination is like trying to convince Sam not to do it. I think it's just like, like, I'm gonna force you to admit, like, admit the that real you reason. you just want to be important and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But actually, you're a monster. No, I, that's what it turns out to be. But, like, right, here... Right, but currently, right. Like, you can... You, like, Dean's face is different in this scene. Like, mm -hmm. he is actually looking at Sam, talking to Sam, asking him questions. Like, 
Dean has not the has bar to tell is so a low. Question <laughs> about this. So like, yeah, bar is on the floor. This is like a conversation they're having, and like you know, at least they're talking, and it seems like it's an actual conversation, not just bullshit. Mm. And then Sam goes, point. How about stop the damn apocalypse? And then we zoom out. And he's alone. And I just pause the episode. I start crying so hard. Mm. It's because we have that whole thing about the metamorphosis where it's like, how could I even explain to you? It's not like you can understand. And then Dean not asking him questions. And it's like, here in Sam's brain. As I've said, like, Dean is, like, he is giving Dean the benefit of the doubt of, like, oh, Dean is trying to reach out, whatever. Mm -hmm. But also, he is explaining himself. Like, for real. He's saying that, like, yeah, it is revenge. But also, like, there are other things at stake here. So who cares if if the main motivator is revenge? There are other motivators, and they're good. I don't think Sam, in, like, quote, real life, would do this like prior to the events of what's happening right now. Later, he does attempt to, right? But do you think, Sam, if Dean hasn't discovered and volunteered the information, would explain it to Dean like this? Well, he wouldn't volunteer the information. If, if yeah. like, him and Dean had a conversation mm. in that car before Bobby called, I don't think Sam would bother with this kind of shit. As I've said then, what? it's like, he was just like, oh, let's just get it over at Do You Wanna Punch Me? Are you but, mad? What's going like, on? He goes like, do you want to punch me? Blah, blah, blah. And then Dean says no. And then Sam goes, okay, well, can you at least let me explain? I think that he would have said the same stuff. You, he would have said, it's for revenge? I think he would bring up the apocalypse, apocalypse thing yeah. first. But I think that, I don't know, they're pretty comfortable talking about revenge in this family. I think yeah, it would but, come up if Dean yeah. asked a follow-up question, at least. Yeah. I feel so bad for Sam. And I mean, yeah. especially because season five happens, it's a lot. And he goes mm. down that pit. Season six, ha- six happens, he's a he's different soulless. person. He's soulless. And uh, season seven, he's going through some shit yet again. And then Oh yeah, he's in that hospital. He's going through what, like Lucifer sickness oh, or whatever the fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and then season eight happens, and he is back as much as he could be. This is Sam. This is like the first time he's like Sam again without the heavy stuff happening. Pretty much, you know. Right. He gets some breathing happening. room. But he gets some breathing room. And I mean, that season ends with, well, <laughs> sacrifice, but, um, he gets to breathe. He gets to live a life even. And then, like, we see him, like, be Sam, but he becomes different. He becomes a lot more quiet. Cause, like, mm. I mean, you can say a lot about season one to three, Sam, but he speaks his mind, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he says things. Season eight onwards, Sam. I do not see him as that. I see him actually as the Sam at the end of this episode, just trying to steal the knife away from Dean. Just trying to be like, Dean, don't kill Ruby. Dean, please, let's just talk. Dean, I'm going to appeal to you as kindly as and calmly as I am. And like, yeah, that's good. And for some people... Uh, that's like a sign of development, sign of maturity even. I can't help but feel that for Sam, it's more of a... I understand the danger now of actually expressing myself the way mm. I would like to. Like, if I'm angry... I mean, because like, anger is often portrayed as like a negative emotion, right? But, Mm -hmm. like, you can express anger. You can be angry in ways that are fine. You know? Like, you don't have to break things or shout or whatever when you're angry. In the future, I feel like even that, Sam has to be like, no, but I can't do that. Because even just a singular misstep into being bad is already too much. Even just a little bit. Even an emotion like anger 
which is not inherently bad, but can lead to bad things. I can't experience anymore, just in case, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I don't know, maybe I'm misremembering uh, the future seasons. I mean, a lot, there's a lot of them. And, you know, it's different for every single one, probably. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But, like, Sam does change. I feel like a lot of future seasons, Sam will remain stuck being mm-hmm. the Sam at the end of this episode, you know? Hmm. I mean, the sound at the very, very end of this episode is pretty neat, but yeah, the yeah, the one trying to talk Dean down is yeah, sad. It's a sad situation. We go back to the hallucination, and Dean is saying, "Oh, the stopping the apocalypse is my gig, not yours." The angel said so. Remember, God picked me, man. So you got any <laughs> other fantastic excuses? Hmm? <laughs> He said, God said, it's my turn to stop the apocalypse. Yeah. So we go to the living room and Bobby and Dina are talking again. And Bobby is saying, okay, Dean. So like, <laughs> let's reconsider. Like, are we actually sure that what we're doing is the right thing? Dean is like, Bobby, you saw what's happening down there. The demon blood is killing him, which we have said, like, there are ways to see this other than that. And all of them are more correct than that way. <laughs> Bobby says so. <laughs> he says, no, yeah. it isn't. We are. And Dean is surprised. Why does he see yeah, he's upset. like, what? And Bobby goes, I'm sorry. I can't bite my tongue any like, longer. Maybe you should have unbitten it earlier. Like when Dean called you. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like, literally, Bobby just got called by the wrong guy in the drama. Yeah, and he was like, you want me to put a bucket down there? Yeah, okay, sure. It happens to the best of us. And also and the, the worst, worst of, of us. us. <laughs> Bobby goes, we're killing him, keeping him locked down there. This cold turkey thing isn't working. Mm-hmm. If he doesn't get what he needs soon, Sam's not gonna last much longer. And like, he's talking about the demon blood. But I don't know. I don't know. It's not like, as you said, it's not like... Because if we're going with the addiction, and if it really is, like, if the point really is to get him off the demon blood, right? Mm. It's not just like demon blood or cold turkey. And by cold turkey, it means we're leaving him in a room to die. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, go down there and check on him. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> go down there. Like, you can just enter the room and be like, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, have we just completely lost it? I probably yeah. have, yeah. And Dean goes, no, I'm not giving him demon blood. I won't do I it. I won't do it. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> and Bobby goes, enemy dies. And Dean goes, then at least he dies human. First of all, what he's is still this? human. He's not. Again, we've talked about how the fuck someone turns into a demon by drinking demon blood, and if I turn into a fucking pig by Cow. drinking pig blood. But, yeah. like, Sam already had demon blood before. Yes. So Dean thinks he wasn't human even back then, which he does kind of say. So. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he's not going to die, human, because he didn't drink demon blood for two days and then dies of dehydration on the floor. Yeah. So he's going to die some kind of demon anyway. So might as well. Yeah, live. like that is your mindset on how the blood works. Like, yeah. People have made the point you made that, like, oh, Dean just doesn't want Sam to go to hell. Like, okay, well, in the show where everyone stares at the camera and says the themes of the show, like, May, like, I would believe that if Dean stared at the camera and said some shit about, like, and I was in hell and it was terrible and I don't want Sam there. Like, I went to hell to avoid him going to hell, blah, 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 blah. Like, okay, like, if that is the case, say it. But yeah. he doesn't say it. There's just the one yeah. soul line, which, like, I don't, could mean anything, honestly. So, like, yeah, yeah it just... Literally just is, like, I would rather my brother be dead than be doing drugs. It doesn't even have to be, like, him explicitly looking at the camera and saying that. (laughs) Although, this is super natural, so it probably will be if they went that way. But, like, just one line here, like, 
then at least he dies human. And like, I don't know, something like, and he won't go to hell. Like, it literally is <laughs> just one line. It's just one line. Just one line. Just one line. And yeah. the fact that they didn't bother to put that in means it doesn't mean that. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is wish, like me bringing that up was not in the context of, and this is what really Dean was trying to do. It was wishful thinking. <laughs> it was like, what if that was what Supernatural was about and th- the entire course of season four was changed because of it? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, even if that was the case, like, I don't, like, I, like, he could just, he could go down and tell Sam, like, Hey, I'm pretty sure that you would go to hell if you keep drinking this. And if Sam's like, that's okay, my priority is stopping Lilith, then like, you just let, you let it happen. Yeah, I mean, he let that fucking guy go to hell. That painter guy, right? Yeah, he absolutely did. He let many people go to hell. He let Bella go to hell. He let Bella go to hell. Just because, um, I don't know, he yeah. hated her. I, I mean, he yeah. seems to hate Sam pretty much. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And I think this is a moment when we're supposed to be like, oh, I think Dean's going too far. Which is why, like, we cut to, like, Dean and the hallucination being mean. But then when we cut back to Dean, it's like, no, but, like, he's really nice, actually. And it's like, I don't think that the extra sentences you provided him make him any less horrible after we cut back to him but you know so we're back in the panic room and the dean and sam's hallucination is saying like i know why you really drink that blood sam and the whole time as dean's talking like sam's telling him to stop talking shut up leave me alone i don't want to hear it um and he's kind of like circling sam like, yes. Sam's in a bed in the middle of the room. Why is it? Mm-hmm. It's crazy that the bed is there, but anyway. I, yeah, I, it's better than not having anywhere to no, lay No, but, like, down. with Anna, the bed was in the corner, right? Oh, well, they put it in the middle of the devil's trap on the floor. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I don't, did they think it would maybe keep Sam from leaving the circle? You could put it in the corner of the devil's trap. It's still in the devil's trap, I feel. No, wait, actually, I think it... No, okay, it's not preventing Sam from leaving because he's standing close-ish to the window of the door when he talks to Dean, right? But, like, when Cass gets him out, he breaks the devil's trap, like... So was it holding Sam there in some way? Honestly, I think the reason why he's in the middle of this thing is so they can do the whole fan right above him thing. Which is, you know, they really utilize this episode. Dean says it's because it makes you feel strong, invincible, a big bad wolf in a world of little pigs. And Sam's denying it. And then Dean presses on and says, like, it's more than that. It's because your whole life you felt different. Am I right? Men will hallucinate their brother calling them the (laughs) F-slur. And Dean says, oh, I hit a little close to home, huh? And it's you weren't different because you were some lonely kid or because of your weirdo family. It's because you're a monster. He continues, he says, like, you were always a monster and you only feel right when you're sucking down more poison and more evil. Oh, it's sad. It's sad. Like, if this is like, I feel this has been part of Sam's journey for, like, in season two, Sam's, like, attitude towards monsters is like, let's look at this situation more holistically. Like, yeah, just because you're a monster doesn't mean you have to be evil. And he is that way in 404 as well. And, like, yeah. that is him trying to, but, like, like, he kills yeah. that guy. Jack? In 404? Yeah. Yeah, and he was about to eat Dean or whatever. So, like, that was him trying to, like, reason it through with himself. Like, okay, maybe I'm not human, but that doesn't make me a monster. And then, like, I feel like later in season four, he leans very hard into the, like, I'm a hunter. Like, monsters are gross. (laughs) Like, if you're not human, shoot it, as he does with the ghouls in 419. 
Um, and that's, like, him trying to be, like, I'm a hunter, I'm human, I'm just using this, like, demon stuff as a tool or whatever. So, like, yeah, for, like, seasons over seasons, he's been trying to figure out different ways to grapple with yeah. the fact that he always felt this way. And, ugh, it's sad. Like, I think we had more hints of this than, like, like, Sam praying every single day. Well, it came out of nowhere in House of the Holy, and it was very effective coming out of nowhere. This I feel like we sort of knew about, but I feel like, I feel like I knew more about it from fandom than, like, from the show. Like, did I, did, like, is this the first time in canon that Sam expresses that he's felt different ever since he was a child? I don't think so. But I'm not sure. When else would he have said it? I mean, he was like, always, like, like, weird kid he's... with the knife or whatever. Oh, no, that's a yeah. joke. <laughs> but he's so, just like, yeah, you're just like well, me for real. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in After School Special, he is like, I don't want to be a freak, but, like, he just means it as, like, I want to be part of this hunter family. Like, that's the because of your weirdo family part that Dean's talking about. Mm. I think that... So there's something else, is what you're saying. Yeah. I feel like this is the first time that they say in the show, like, Sam always knew that there was something internal that was, like, wrong with him. It's sad to think about. I always knew it too, Sam. <laughs> you're not special. <laughs> so we go back up to Dean, and I, I wish he was dead. <laughs> They're doing this camera angle on him. To, like, I don't know, make him look taller or more determined or something. And he's going, like, I would die for him in a second, but I won't let him do this to himself. I can't. I guess I found my line. I won't let my brother turn into a monster. And there's a slow zoom on his face to show how he's, like, such a hero and such a good person for saying this. And, He's well, I, I hope he him. dies, and he will. Thanks, Jenny. Like, what is this? Like, this isn't noble. Like, what? I don't think it's I a, guess I He's a hero, line. though. I don't okay. think that's kind of the framing. But what, also, okay, I may what just do you be projecting see it as? due to the everything. I mean, you might be right. What do you see it as? I don't think it's a hero. It's just dramatic. He's saying something dramatic. Bobby, like, afterwards drops his whole, I think we should stop doing this shtick. So, like, we're supposed to think that this convinced Bobby, at least. So we're supposed to think that this... And I think that the point... I don't think there's any convincing happening here. Okay. Because it's like, this is Dean's brother. Dean is calling the shots. And Dean said, no, we're not gonna do that. He doesn't need to convince Bobby. Bobby didn't have to, like, go after him with a shotgun, though. That's true. Bobby is just annoying as fuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe he was. But okay, I think that the other, yeah, the other reason that I feel like it is supposed to be like Dean's so great is just like we're supposed to see this in contrast with the hallucination Dean, and we're supposed to be like real life Dean hasn't given up on Sam yet, and he's so nice for that. Whereas no. hallucination Dean is being so mean by calling him a monster right now. Whereas, like, current Dean thinks that he's turning into one, but he'll stop it. But, like, Dean, at the end of this episode, does say that, like, you're always like that. Because Sam finally says, like, I don't want to stop, like, for realsies. And then I think that's when Dean's like, you are a monster for real. Oh, okay, okay. Because, like, he does tell Sam, okay, like, let's go hunt Lilith, just me and you. Like, that sounds fine. And then Sam's like, no, I want Ruby there, and I'm not going to stop drinking demon blood. And Dean's like, oh, okay, so there's just fundamentally something wrong with you as a person, and you're not human anymore. Okay, great. Uh, At least that's how I see the progression. So, like, here, the argument you're making is he still doesn't think that Sam was a monster monster since birth. Yeah. (laughs) Just the demon blood drinking is doing it. And if he continues drinking demon blood, he will turn into a monster. And then later... this according like, to Cass. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know what? Yeah, you're right. To be fair, an angel did say he's gonna turn into a monster if he keeps on drinking demon blood. But only if he drinks enough to kill it, which is Sam's goal. So, I mean, he's probably gonna do that if he continues. It's That's pretty funny, then, if, like, at the end of that, Dean was like, oh, when he starts drinking demon blood again, he's not gonna 
turn into a monster. He was a monster always. always. Yeah. <laughs> he was. Jesus. Yeah. So okay, there's a dramatic zoom. It could mean anything. I guess I found my line. Like you didn't shoot when you thought he was about to kill Joe and born under a bad sign. I mean, as I already said, it's not about like the actions. The action, like, yeah, yeah. He's not trying to prevent harm. He doesn't have issue with Sam causing harm. He has issue with Sam, like drinking demon blood, which is icky. It's bad. It's yucky. <laughs> it's yucky. <laughs> and then that action that doesn't harm <laughs> is what turns him into a monster to Dean. Because we cut right back to Bobby's panic room, and there's, like, the audio's overlapping a little bit, I think, when Hallucination Dean says, Monster, Sam, you're a monster. So, yeah, I think it is, like, a, like I said, like, Hallucination Dean's given up on him, but real Dean's a good guy. Sam's struggling, looks distraught. He goes, like, Dean, no. Dean says, and I tried so hard to pretend that we were brothers, that you weren't one of the filthy things that we hunt, but we're not even the same species. You're nothing to me. Sam goes like, don't say that to me. Don't you say that to me. And he just, he sounds so emotionally wrecked about it, and it makes me sad. Like, he actually does still care about their relationship. Wow. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I guess this season has been, like, like, Sam has been telling himself, like, Dean's, like, weak and incompetent and stupid, and that's yeah. why I have to step up. And, like, his brain conjures up Mary saying that to him also. But, like, there's still, like, a part of him that, like, yeah, like, Dean's his brother, he cares about his opinion, he trusts him, he wants him with him, and it's, yeah, yeah, sorry, like, Sam. Dean erased him. I mean, maybe not raised him, but they grew up together. Yeah. I mean, he did look up to Dean. Like, that's something that he did do. So. God, do you ever think about how, like, Sam has, like, literally no one to text? (laughs) Like, Dean will do some fuck shit, and, like, who is he gonna talk to about that? Like, Bobby? Like, no. (laughs) Like, Ruby? Like, maybe. (laughs) She's not gonna reply. I mean, Dean also has no one to text, but, like, He's annoying he's, as fuck. He like, yeah, he's annoying as fuck. And I also feel like he has Cass, or he's starting to have Cass in a way that Sam does not have Ruby. I mean, he did scream himself to his horse for, for two hours. two and a half hours. What a commitment, two and a half hours. Dude, just give up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe he was just jacking it. Like... <laughs> He was jacking it for two and a half hours, and then at the end, he was like, oh, and also, Cass, if you could come down here. He was doing karaoke for two and a half hours, <laughs> and at the end, he was like, he was on the mic going, um, Cassiel, Cassiel, if you're here, this next song is this for song you. This song is for you. <laughs> yeah, it shows up. Also, like, this is a moment when, like, Ruby has abandoned him for, like, a few weeks, and, like, it's why he's going through withdrawal at first, so... Yeah. Even if he did have Ruby about as much or more than Dean had Cass, he doesn't right now. Also, I, like, Dean does have Bobby. I feel like, Dean literally called, like, his best friend Bobby and was like, Sam's so bad. Like, will you lock him in a room for me? And Bobby was like, yeah. Dean is, like, the only person that can love Sam, sort of. In the situation, the social situations that he's found himself in. Literally, like, Dean and Bobby is like, if Dean calls Bobby about Sam, Bobby would be like, you're so right. Like, so true, bestie. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, Sam calls Bobby about yeah, Dean. He's, he's like, like well, look, do you want to consider can't... it from his perspective for a bit? No, this is what Bobby says. He's like, look, I can't really judge because I'm not in this situation. <laughs> like, I don't know the full story. Like, I don't, you know, I'm also Dean's friend and I don't want to impose, you know, I just want to be neutral with this Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. The Dean hallucination disappears, and hours pass until it's nighttime. Sam is lying down, and I think he's awake at this point, although I'm not sure. I think he's asleep, and then the cuffs, like, open, and then he wakes Mm. up. He is chained to the bed, and 
he gets on chain. He gets up and the door like opens and he gets out. As he is moving up the stairs from the basement, we see Cass in the background. Yeah. We see him like throughout, like through the slats in the staircase, which yeah. is a fun shot. It's so funny that he told Dean like Sam's gonna be wooing forever if he stops Lilith. So do you promise to serve God, be coworkers with me, and not mend? And Dean promised, and then he was like, "Slay, okay, I'm gonna let Sam out." To stop Lilith now. Uh, he goes up towards the room and he closes it with his with a finger. Like he strokes his finger through the air and then it closes the door. And I remember this scene pretty much exclusively from the heretic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We go out and there is a figure hunching over a railing. <laughs> and I was like... Damn, that person has Cass's coat. <laughs> it's because I don't think I've ever seen Cass hunch like this. Like, he really? has bad posture in that one scene. Just. But, like, not, like, leaning over a railing. Has Does Cass ever lean on anything after this? I do not think he does. <laughs> I think he, has f- he has many seasons to lean on something. I'm sure he no. does. The next time he is like at the pier, he is just standing there, hand in pocket. And it's in season Aww. nine. All right. Anna shows up. He turns around. She's there. He has, again, wet, pathetic eyes. Full frown. Everything. And Anna goes, what did you do? And Cass is just going, you shouldn't have come, Anna. And he, it's not like a menacing thing or anything. He, he is expressing a genuine, like, it's sad that you're here. Anna is going, why would you let Sam Winches her out? Cass says, those were my orders. Is Julie Niven, like, not a good actress? Or are they just giving her bad lines? Like, Anna's just not been particularly scintillating in, like, this episode or 420. 416 like, is the last one where she's been a good character, I feel. Mm-hmm. The thing is, like, I think she was appealing in 416. Um, yeah. There were times in I the 409 and 10. That she was good. She just did not have chemistry with the which, which mm. was made essential by the plot that she has. But, right. Oh, she it's fine. This, <laughs> this episode, I did think to myself, are the two female characters in this episode played by terrible actors or am I, <laughs> or am I misogynistic? <laughs> I also have to... Because the thing, there are times when I think that Cass is badly acted, but I don't bring it up in the podcast because to do so would be to acknowledge the existence of someone oh, playing yeah. Cass when he is in fact his own guy. <laughs> So, I'm like, really- I think it's, like, maybe, like, a, because I'm less invested in Ruby and Anna's characters, which, like, could come partly from a place of, like, misogyny, like, I am more, like, willing to, like, notice their bad acting and then say it when yeah. I see it. When did you think Cass was badly acted? <sighs> I mean, when, when, when Misha Collins was playing Jimmy Novak, we insulted him to hell and back, but that's because that's Jimmy. Yeah, exactly. Jimmy's not sacred. <laughs> we are so cast filled. I don't think people realize how we're so how much we're so cast filled. Like during, I think people like, know. Be- <laughs> do you think they do? I like before we started this podcast, it mm-hmm. was all we talked about pretty much. Like we just talked about cast. Maybe yeah. not all, but like, he no, sure was his, in like, every single we, conversation. When we got to Cass, we were a lot less Cass pilled than we yeah. had been in the past. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad for the podcasting experience. Possibly Honestly, bad. I think it's good. Okay. If we were as Cass pilled. That's true. Like, we would we were, skip over every Sam scene in this we episode. Would, we would or skip something. over everything. And I think we won't even talk well about Cass. It would just be like. Oh my god, he's here! Which we kind of are doing in this episode. Yeah, I don't know if we're doing that much better. (laughs) It's so funny that, like, you know, like, I mean, this is a heavy episode, so obviously, like, the joking around with, like, the Sam and Dean stuff, especially the Sam stuff, is kind of, like, a bit 
you know, impossible with the... Or, like, mm. the way we do it with the uh, cast scenes, it's like, well, that's inappropriate. And I just don't think it would be funny if we do it. Just because, well, it's a different topic. But yeah. then cast shows up and they're like, are they gonna fuck her off? <laughs> like, <laughs> everything is a sex joke. And, well... That is where the mind well, goes, unfortunately. Yeah, upon seeing his pretty, pretty wet, sad eyes. And yeah. the, the line of his mouth when he just looks sort of sad is is truly so enchanting. I think in 4.15, like when we were just coming back, I saw Cass and I was like, I don't know if he's that well acted. But I feel oh. like that's just because I was seeing like prestige actors, David Tennant and Michael Sheen. For like three months, and then I came back to to D list actors on Supernatural. Yeah, I don't know. And also, like, I mean, we said that he's very bad during the fight scenes in four sixteen. It is, but I mean, yeah. this is true. But like, that's a casting. <laughs> I, even that, I like. It's like it's like it's yeah. I mean, thing. you yeah. You had the perspective that he's getting his body and such. I just had the perspective <laughs> that this is kind of cringe to watch in it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of any epi- any scene. Was there? There's never been I'm a like, moment when you were like, Cass hasn't acted well. I mean, the confession was pretty bad. He <laughs> <laughs> was, it was horrendous. And that's not even cast for half of it. That's me calling it. Coming out of the screen to say, I'm in love with Jensen Ackle. <laughs> we can't. We, I, this is a joke, but we can't. We can't do it. Have we, have we, have we cockles joked in the podcast before? As, as Dean said, that's my line. I won't let this podcast turn into a monster. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a joke. It was a joke. I know it was a joke, but I uh, do we. Uh, we've probably mentioned cockles before. I guess it's fine. <laughs> well, here is our. That's officially a joke thing. <laughs> Just to make it clear. And uh, East Crystal worries. Anna's like orders. You saw him, Cass. He's drinking demon blood. It's so much worse than we thought. <sighs> whatever. Like, whatever. <laughs> That's how I feel about this. D was trying to stop him. And Cass goes, you really shouldn't have come. And he is fully facing Anna now. There was a portion of this conversation where he was turned around. But now he's facing Anna. And two angels show up and hold Anna by her side. And we go to Cass's face. There's like a bright light from where Anna and the two angels are. And then they're gone. Yeah. And then it's, it's just Cass. quite sad. When they yeah. take her away, he like does turn his head back to the side like he's statue moding her. And oh, it, this must suck for Anna so much. Like she thought that she helped Cass like rebel against heaven and do free will. So she was like, nice one, Anna. But then he got lobotomized. And came back and is trying to start the apocalypse. And, like, he called her and, like, she came because she, like, cares about him. And, like, he's also, like, the only other angel who's a little bit like her. And probably she's, like, even if he got lobotomized, like, there's probably part of, you know, that free will in him. And, like, he was, like, doubting in 416. And, like, I helped him, like, turn towards, like the the free will path and maybe I can do it again and we can be like friends again or whatever and like when Cass says you shouldn't have come like it's pretty similar to in 416 when she shows up and he says you shouldn't be here we still have orders to kill you to which Anna replies somehow I don't think you'll try because like she trusted him and like his goodness in their relationship yeah and now like he says the same thing basically again and she's probably still thinks that like well this is still Cass and I trust him and like we're siblings I was his commander we've known each other for 2,000 years it's gonna be okay and then now she's back up in like heaven angel jail which is the place she said last episode was like just like the worst place ever to be and she's gonna break out and then like die (laughs) I think that's like the rest of her storyline I mean what is the reason why they bring her up there? 
like, like um no 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 like I mean from the supernatural writer perspective because they're trying to put her in the back burner because they're trying to figure yeah, out what to do with her. Yeah, they're just trying to get her out of the way because they're like we don't have use for this character. Right. I now, mean, yeah, they haven't really been utilizing her that well since four sixteen anyway either. Like she was just when? like their angel, Bobby. <laughs> I wonder when they like gave up on yeah the Anna situation because she was I mean well they keep on saying that she was yeah, supposed she was to be, supposed a to be yeah. yeah the cast and then after everyone like cast so much they were like well we don't really know how to close out Anna's story now so up to, into the the bank vault of heaven you go yeah it's gonna be season five's problem. It is sad that they, yeah, as you said, gave up on her character in this last yeah. part of season four. I mean, I feel kind of stupid saying this because shows are made up of people pretty much and their relationships with each other. So I don't mm-hmm. want to be like, oh, it's bad if a character is defined by like her relationships. Cause like, yeah, well, duh. <laughs> but I don't know. I just do not like that. They define her with like her relationship with Cass, which they do develop, and I like. And mm. on then with Dean, who like there's nothing there. I understand that it's because she's a new character, and it's like if she's a new character and it doesn't work out, you wouldn't like, you know, try to keep her around. You would just be like, okay, let's get a new character in here. And I understand that. It's just again, if it's just like you know, one woman, if it happens to one female character, Mm. it's like, okay, doesn't have to be, like, egregious. But Mm. when it's a pattern of, oh, we have a female character, and she's interesting, but maybe not in the way we thought she should be. So, uh, let's put her in the back burner and then bring her back a couple episodes later to die. Yeah. Mm. And it's like, they do it here with Anna. They will do it later with Joe and Ellen. How we ever met? They're playing the long con with Sarah Blake. <laughs> they literally <laughs> fucking are. six seasons between her first appearance and then her death or whatever. Oh, Missouri! They they fuck up Missouri real bad. Yeah. No, but like shockingly, like at least Meg is a person. I feel like. Oh yeah, I feel like they Ruby did is, an okay job with Ruby's Meg. A person, and I don't know, like supernatural. It's kind of good at writing demon women, I suppose, is what we can conclude. Although that's true. Not so all of know. them. Who are the other demon women? Abaddon. Like Lilith. Lilith, that's true. I just wish Supernatural <laughs> has a more robust cast of characters. Yeah. And, you know, that includes their women in the show. I don't know, maybe consider not having to pair them up with Sam or Dean. Like, <laughs> let's see how that goes. I mean, Joe, th- oh, no, no, they pair up Joe with they Dean. They pair Joe with Dean. Meg, um, they don't really... Pair, like, I mean, with Sam, not really. They pair up with Sam a bit, and then they don't. Yeah. And it does work, yeah. I mean, she's still interesting. Yeah. They're gonna pair her up with Cass later, baby. <laughs> but yeah. True. I don't know. The Anna stuff is just again. It's not like supernatural just shows everything's fault because like the audience did also react pretty negatively to her and everything. Mm. But it just becomes this cycle of the the writers are apprehensive to write female characters, and when they do, it's not yeah. their best work. And then the and characters that means that get they curate mad. an audience that hates female characters. Yeah. Because they give in to the people who hate women each time. Yeah. And then, like, the audience complains. The show's like, whoops, okay. The show puts out and like, complains. And it's like it becomes this arduous cycle of, mm-hmm. well, who's to blame? And it's like, you know, it's the fans. No, it's the show. I don't know. It's probably me for still watching it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I feel like I say this often, but it's like the people who would make the best critical Supernatural podcast are people who quit watching Supernatural after two episodes. <laughs> like, because it's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Anyway. 
Cass sees all this and goes, eh? Oh, and he doesn't. He's real sad. Yeah. He has real sad eyes. But he turns incredibly sad. He's looking down to the river. And I forgot the, to- the tune to The River by Bruce Springsteen. So I'm so sorry. Well, I don't know it. Sorry. We're in the salvage yard and Sam's trying to steal a car. Uh, when Bobby shows up holding a shotgun. What is the gun for, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you say it like that? I'm <laughs> what is the gun for, Bobby? I just, I'm curious, like, does he think Sam's gonna try to hurt him for locking him in Wait, the panic room? I mean, that's, that's valid. So funny. That's so funny. I thought that you were quoting Sam. I was like, did Sam say that? And why did you say it? And also, no, why no is Crystal saying it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, Sam should have said in the voice that you just did, what is the gun for, Bobby? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Bobby would have let him go. <laughs> yeah. Bobby's like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> We're Sam Winchester. I, d- I don't know if it's for self-defense because he thinks Sam's going to hurt him. Or it's like, I'm just, just going to force Sam back to the panic room by gunpoint. I think it's more of the latter. Sam sees this and Bobby is like, the only place you're going is back inside with me. Sam says, no. And Bobby goes... Damn it, boy. And, like, he's, like, he's clearly supposed to be having, like, a moment. But, like, no one's making you do anything, you know Bobby. What? Just, like, leave him alone. You know what? I think Jim Beaver is also a bad actor. <laughs> no, because I've been saying, like, I don't know. I just find it impossible to connect with Bobby. Like, I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know. It's just he gives information and then he's gone. What else? We have other characters in this show who gives information and is gone. Like, Cass. that's Rufus's job. Cass was like that. <laughs> Rufus was like that. Ellen was, was like that for a while. I mean, it's the thing about possible. Bobby is he's kind of like a likable, but not that much. Like, he's not charming. I mean, he doesn't have, because like, I don't mean charming as in like, you know, like, happy whatever. I don't mean that by charming. Like, Rufus is, an asshole a little bit to Dean. Like, he's not pleasant. But mm. he's charming. Bobby is not charming. Yeah. Like, Sam is a killjoy, but he's charming. Mm. Bobby is a killjoy and is not charming. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for insulting Bobby to tell him back. Maybe but Jim Beaver yeah. is a bad actor. And Sam doesn't back away and he goes, You won't shoot me, Bobby. And Bobby says, don't test me. You are, me. shoot me, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> what accent is that, by the way? It's not an accent. <laughs> it's just uh, a voice. That I'm aware of. It's just a voice. <laughs> I don't know what the voice is trying to convey. I saw, Maybe, I'm like, in love game with show the, host-esque. Like, I love that, like, Italian New Yorker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Forget about it. No, no, that's that. That's different. Uh, I think that's I, it. That's it. You think that's it? Okay, great. What is what is know. another thing that Italian New Yorkers say? <laughs> like, hey, I'm walking here. Seems to be the other one. Hey, I'm too. walking here. <laughs> that's <too> bad. <laughs> what are we doing? Let's stop this immediately. <laughs> I'm sorry, Italian. Sam's you. literally about to have a moment. <laughs> and Sam goes, you won't do it. You can't do it. And I think it's the underlying sentiment, like, you're too weak to. Hmm. I don't think, because if it's like, you're too weak, it would be a more taunty, you know, situation. But like, he's using his soft voice. Yeah. Mm. He's using his puppy, dog eyes, whatevs. <laughs> Mm. I feel like maybe like Sam is thinking, oh, he's not going to do it. He's too weak. But like not weak in terms of like, you know, like will, but more mm. of soft of heart, which is a different thing. Yeah. It this, you know, like when Bobby was like, maybe he's in there because we love him too much. Like Sam is out here about to get into this car because 
Bobby loves him too much. But also, like, even if I didn't know Sam Winchester personally, mm. if he was, like, standing there, like, are you going to shoot me? <laughs> like, what are you doing now? <laughs> what if he's standing there going, are you going to shoot me? Are you? I'll be like, no. Like, that's not, like, a love thing. That's just, like, I don't know. Who wants to shoot people? I don't, not me. <laughs> Many people on Supernatural. <laughs> Many people on Supernatural. This is true. Yeah. So Bobby says, we're trying to help you, Sam. And Sam takes the gun and then repositions it so it's like pressed up right against his heart. And he says, then shoot. Oh, it's miserable. Sam is, like, suicidal this season, like, just in the, like, like, I'm probably gonna die when I kill Lilith, and I'm fine with that, excited even. But, like, yeah, this is I mean, a part of this is, like, I know, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah. Like, a part of it is, like, I know Bobby won't shoot, but as Mm -hmm. you said, like, if he dies, well, what am I gonna do? Don't really care, you know. Sure, yeah. why not? But, like, like... Specifically, like, killing me would help me. Yeah. And, I don't know, like... Oh, Sam. And, like, yeah, a part of it is tricking Bobby because he does bang him up over the head. Hell yeah. But, yeah, that... I, but yeah, I think he means what he says here. He does, yeah. You know, Bobby just stands there. They're both just standing there. And then Sam... Grabs the gun from him and knocks him over the head. And there's, like, a moment after Bobby gets knocked out where Sam sort of stands there and, like, before he drops the gun, sort of sadly down on the ground, like, what what was the pause about? I mean, like, he, like, it is a, it is a choice to, like, not take the gun with him. And I guess, mm-hmm. like, it is just, like, well, like, what's it gonna do? But also, like, Sam... This is like this car does not have like weapons in it, I'm assuming. Like and Sam has to yeah. use like the knife in Ruby's boot or whatever in order to drink her blood. Like he seems to be making like a deliberate choice to go somewhere unarmed. And like part of it I think is just like, well, like soon I will get my powers and then I'll just be able to yeah. like do stuff without weapons. Well, what also, if like, he gets attacked is, by there's a no werewolf? guarantee. Yeah, what if he gets attacked by something else? There's also no guarantee that Ruby is actually going to show up this time, like when she hasn't all the other times. Like, I mean, this could also be like part of the passive suicidality. Like, if something happens to me on the trip, like I'm not going to defend myself. I mean, this is what I do wonder about. This did cast like heal him a little bit what's happening because he was just having right, delusions he was just having hallucinations yeah so uh now he's not and like later he is portrayed to be uneasy but pretty mm-hmm. much the sim like a similar vibe as like last episode before dean found out you know yeah i think that's possible that like you know the Cass angels would order him Cass, to that yeah the angels would order cast to like make him able to drive for a bit because we need him to actually get to the place to start the apocalypse and all that but also i don't know like maybe he's just having an easier time like it could just be that but i think the healing also makes sense but also i think there's the fact that he really wants to reconcile with dean right like that's like one of the Things he tells Ruby after he drinks the demon blood and feels, like, more, like, physically comfortable again. Like, is it, like, a if Dean finds me, I don't want to have a gun, like, when he's here. Because, like, I want to make sure that we just talk. I, he's I, really not thinking that far ahead. You know, you know what? The reason why I asked the, like, did Cass heal him? It's mm-hmm. like... Sam is obviously not in, like, a state of mind that involves careful thought. Like, Mm. well, when he was in the panic room. Right Mm. now, I don't know. But, like, I think you can make the argument that he's just not thinking about it. Like, at 
right now. And like, mm-hmm. I mean, there are other more pressing things like I need to get out of here, which I think yeah. is the most pressing thing. So if I get out of here without weapons, it's fine as long as I'm out. It's like a the, he, the thing is, he's already holding the gun. Like, it was a choice to drop the gun. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I guess it's also, like, if Bobby wakes up and is, like, like, Dean, like, Sam ran off and he has a gun, like, I feel like, I feel like when Dean finds him, it is going to be a different sort of attitude than, like, yeah. Dean, he ran off, but he's unarmed. So, I don't, I think there's, there could be some strategizing there. You know what he took? He didn't take the what? gun, but you know what he took? He took what? Bobby's cap. <laughs> <laughs> no, because Bobby was on the floor and his hat was off. And like, I mean, it probably just fell, you know, like yeah. behind him or something. But then I was thinking, oh, did Sam take his hat? That is so mean. <laughs> like, I understand that Sam just went through the worst abuse that, like, most people can fathom. But yeah. why he didn't have to take Bobby's hat. Now Bobby's head is exposed to the world. Is that fine by you, Sam? Bobby obviously doesn't want to expose it to the world. Now it's exposed. Why are we going to do about it? For real. He wanted to, like, do some, like, role play sex with Ruby. And Ruby was like, you know, I think that, like, old man that, like, tells you lore sometimes is kind of hot. And <laughs> Sam was like, like okay. say no more. I got this. <laughs> he hotwires the car successfully and he's off anyway dean is finally awake why the fuck are they not doing turns in sleeping i don't know i mean i assumed that Cass had put them to sleep this is true but also i think they're just the gap like i mean you would only do the like let's take turns resting situation if like you are actively looking out for sam like you're mm-hmm. actually watching him, then it's like, oh, okay, well, it's my shift to watch him. But like, they're not. So like, I totally buy that they were just like, and now it's nighttime and let's leave. <laughs> Bobby and Dean, they go into the panic room, and they're uh, they're uh, talking about how like, you know, Sam got out, and Bobby's like, I don't know, maybe he had help, and every like devil strap is busted. And Dean's like, oh, like demon, so like Ruby. Blaming uh, women for everything, I see. Yeah, it was Cass all along. It was Angel, Castiel, Dean. What do you, yeah. Now what? Now what? Does, do, do they even realize or are they told ever that that's Cass? Huh. Cass did that? Probably. Like when Cass gets Dean in the green room, it would come up. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't, maybe it would. But also it'd be really funny if like, you know, like many years from now, like 10 <laughs> years from now, they're like just hanging out and they're reminiscing mm. and they're yeah. like, God, we really got to do some crazy shit back in the day. Yeah, and Cass is like, yeah, I remember when uh Sam was going through demon blood withdrawal and he was in that panic room and like Angel told me to open so the door like, and let him so out. Isn't that crazy? crazy? Why the hell did I do that? Oh my god, do you guys remember? <laughs> and everyone at the table is like, What the fuck? And Charlie is also there. She's like, Sam was addicted to demon blood. And yeah, it was a real fun time. Yeah, yeah true, because it wasn't in the books. How the fuck did Chuck write season four as a book series without that? What do you mean? Like, Chuck, like, season four of Supernatural got published as a book series by Chuck in Universe, but he left out the demon blood. Like, what, what was the, like, did he just, like, how'd he do that? Did you, did, are you for it's sure a, that he, well, he said in 418 that he didn't even put it in the books because he thought it would make Sam unsympathetic. And then it actually got published? Well, doesn't he have a fan convention? And later, also, like, Cass is in the musical, like, Cass is in the <gasps> season Castiel! I'll just wait here, then. <laughs> what a corny ass song, but oh my god, it's so cute. And also so terrible, but we've talked about it, and we will talk yeah. about it more in the future, yeah. just by anyway. virtue. And also because we're watching the episode. Uh, well, I don't, you're right. I suppose he put it in eventually because it, it's completely essential. So, 
I mean, it could just be like Sam's using his powers and they didn't like that he was using his powers and then he used his powers so raw and so hard that he killed Lilith. God, you think Chuck kids bopped in the the Winchester (laughs) story? Yeah. (laughs) I love it. At some point, uh, Bobby goes like, how Sam got out isn't as important as where he is now. I love how I <laughs> how I just completely changed that fucking sentence. Well, he said how he got gone out ain't as important as where he got gone to, which <laughs> is fun. I was like, that's a really fun turn of phrase. It's just I can't say it. Like whatever <laughs> it is about Bobby's accent that makes him able to say this properly, that I. Do not possess it. And he just goes, I'll tell you one thing. I hope he's with Ruby. Because killing her is the next big item on my to-do list. And Bobby's like, I thought you were on call for like the angels. And Dean goes, I am on call in my car on my way to murder the bitch. Which, you know. <sighs> uh, like, uh, what are, like, I'm trying to understand Dean's perspective. But, like, okay, just due to the fact that the show has still not sold me on drinking demon blood is bad. Like, I, me and Dean have nothing in common right now. Sam is in a hotel room. The, the transcript describes it as a nice hotel room. It is a nice hotel room. You think so? Um, I thought that the octagons in the paneling were really cute, at least. <laughs> I mean, but this is not like a hotel room, is it? Uh, like it's. I think it's a hotel room and not a motel room. I think that's. How the, do you know? But like the wall is like, like ugly. Is it? It uh, is. I wasn't noticing that much. I Let don't me know. check. To be fair to me, I, actually, this is not fair to anyone. Okay. <laughs> I do, I don't think I've ever been to like a cheap hotel. So, mm. like, I don't know what they look like. <laughs> so, yeah, I've only been to yeah. cheap hotels in China, so I don't know what the U.S. ones look like. There's, like, a couch in there in addition to the bed. Like, there's a decent amount of room to spread out. I think that's more than a motel would give you. So, Sam's, like, sitting on the couch, and he's shaking. Ruby knocks on the door, and she comes in, and she's, like holding her like she's like holding her the strap of her bag in a way that's very cute and like her whole affectation here is very like oh like i'm flirty and i'm nice and i'm here to help you or whatever i have missed her smile it's good to see her again like i feel like i'd almost forgotten what her voice sounds like but she says honeymoon sweet really i'm flattered and they establish that she could not have gotten Sam out of that room. But it doesn't matter who got him out. Because he's just out. Which is kind of Bobby's sentiment, I suppose. And Sam asks, like, where the hell have you been? Like, apparently the last three weeks she's just been trying to find Lilith. So she has not had time to check her voicemail. She says, I'm sorry you're hurting. Really, I had no idea that Dean would do that to you. And, okay, like, is that, is the, is the consensus that, like, she deliberately annoyed, like, ignored him for three weeks to, like, get him into, like, a bad emotional state so he would be more willing to listen to her when she came back? Probably. Probably. It is, like, a very common, um, like tactic to like you know like give mm-hmm. like to give it attention or like something that a person wants or needs and then take it away to like reaffirm like power dynamics yeah i mean i buy that she was looking for lilith yeah i also buy- well okay but aren't but she it, those are not working to things together no they're not she's working oh right because lilith doesn't want to die so, yeah. like, now that she's found out that Sam's gonna kill her and she has to die, like, she probably is actively trying to evade Ruby and Sam. But yeah, you're right. Like, Ruby could pop in and, like, give Sam some blood. Yeah. Or reply, which she doesn't do. 
No bars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that line is still the funniest thing in Supernatural. <laughs> yeah. Cass is like, mm. oh, there's no signal in heaven. And dude is just like, <laughs> no bars. <laughs> Yeah, it's heaven, bro. What about? I had no idea that Dean would do that to you. Does she think, you think that's, that's true? I mean, I don't think she really thinks that. Yeah, I mean, she's been on the receiving end of Dean trying to kill her in a way that Sam has not before. Yeah. Like, I think she knows that Dean would turn on Sam very instantaneously. And there's but like I do think no yeah. reason for her. To think nicely of Dean, you know? Mm, just that, like... like oh, I mean, I mean it's medical a abuse is pretty bad. Dean to her. I mean, it's it's different from Dean to her to... Dean to... Sam. Yeah. No, what do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, no, I mean... Oh, no, I'm just saying that, like... She does have no reason to think well of Dean, but I do think that, like... She could think that he'll probably just respond by, like punching Sam some like not necessarily like lock him up because that doesn't really help with her plan like she couldn't get him out like yeah. if he actually stayed in that panic room forever like Lucifer would not have been able to rise because I mean she didn't know Cass was gonna let Sam out like she would have been screwed does she know that the angels want or is that like hidden knowledge even from her huh I assumed that she wouldn't know because she was She thinks that scared, yeah, and she she thinks that Lucifer's gonna reward her and Sam. I don't think she thought that he was gonna possess Sam. Like I don't think she knows about the final battle. Sam says, You and me both which is sad. Like again, he did yeah. have faith in their relationship. I do think that Ruby's like anger at Dean or like feeling sad that Sam's hurt, like is does come from like a real feeling but it's just that like she cares about sam and doesn't want him to feel hurt but like she also needs him to follow like her plan exactly as she wants it to happen and if that means hurting sam or lying to him or whatever like it's a necessary evil sam explains that he took this really nice hotel room to throw dean off the scent because Dean knows his habits, his aliases, everything, and knows exactly which motel Sam would pick. Ruby says that it won't be easy to shake him. I mean, he knows you better than anyone. But, like, I feel like she's, she is saying it in a way to, like, get Sam to say, no, he doesn't, so that that's something that he'll have said to drive a wedge between them some more. And, you know, Sam does say, not as well as he thinks. And Ruby's like, you know, it's sad that things have gotten this bad between you two. She's While so giggling funny. giggling and twirling her hair. <laughs> yeah, like, oh my god, like, you guys are, like, doing so bad. And it's like, because of me? Oh my god, whoopsies! She, like, tries to start comforting him by, like, stroking his hair, but, like, midway through hair stroke, he, like, slams her down on the bed. Uh, and then... It's like, he, yeah, no, it's like, the, it's like a sex fake out, or not a sex fake out. They're just making it sexual in that, like, he's moving down, and it's like, like, a going down on her motion, but then it's to get a knife from her ankle sheath. So he cuts her arm and drinks blood out of her, and yeah. she has her I'm a sicko smile on yeah. as... That happens. That that one post that's like... And the thing about season four is that no matter what you want to say about Sam and Ruby, those two actually they want to fuck each other. Yeah. And, yeah. And it, because, yeah. yeah. I mean, the actors did meet here and get married, so... Uh, we're back to the salvage yard. Dean and Bobby are, I don't know, figuring out where Sam went. And Sam stole the car, and then that car is left somewhere. And in that place, there are two cars that have been stolen. A 1999 
Honda Civic Blue, nice and anonymous like Sam likes. Or, I'm looking this up and that's a really nice color of blue. It's fun. It's got a fun mouth. The other car that has been stolen is a... Uh, He's an 05 Escalade with custom rims. It's Dean and Bobby are like, oh, Sam would choose the Honda Civic like on a regular day. But because he's trying to throw us off, he chose the other one. And like, yeah, I, I think know, it's kind of corny. It's kind of dumb. It's corny as fuck. Also, like, like, this isn't this- like a puzzle for like two year olds. Like, I don't care about the reasoning you're going through here. No, it's like a reverse psychology. And it's like, what if Sam actually did reverse reverse psychology? And Dean's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to reverse reverse He only took, he was only a psychology major. He wasn't a reverse psychology major. (laughs) A part of me also is like, I think, I mean, I couldn't figure out what was Because, like, Sam never explicitly says, like, I'm trying to throw Dean off, right? He does. He He tells Ruby that he chose the... He says that he chose the nice motel because Dean knows what motel he normally choose. So, a part of me is like, that's not saying that so that Dean won't find me. A part of me was like, wait, was he trying to get Dean to find him? No. You really think no? No, like... He's, like, what he if said, it's Sam I, who's I chose... doing the reverse psychology? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, I, like, to get okay, Dean to really? find him. He's like, Dean is gonna think I'm trying to hide from him, and he's gonna find me from trying okay, to hide no, from him. no, no. Sam says whatever it takes to shake him. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. If you hadn't During- taken that nap, you would have remembered. And by nap, I mean full <laughs> nights of sleep. <laughs> this is true. Uh, I'm complete. I slept for seven hours in between this part of the episode and the last part. Slay. But Dean is like, I know that kid. So, yeah, it, he took the custom rims Escalade. Boo. Boo, honestly. No, you don't. No, he yeah, never. and, and he never the, does, calling and he him never a kid would. is the exactly calling him a kid is doing the same thing that calling him Sammy has been doing. Yeah, this season. that we've mentioned. Yeah, Dean goes out to find him. Meanwhile, Sam and Ruby are having post demon blood drinking atus, and <laughs> Ruby says your appetite has gotten much bigger, and Sam takes a bit of an offense at this. But everybody's like, no, 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 that's a good thing. It means you're getting ready to kill Lilith. You're getting stronger. This is when she relays the final seals breaking thing that we have talked about. And that the angels are just, I don't know, doing fuck all about it. And she said she found something big, which is that the 66 seal, it can't be broken just by any demon. It needs to be broken by Lucifer's first I mean, and that's true. It, only Lilith can break the last seal, it's true. She isn't lying about that. Lilith is the final seal, I love it. <laughs> and Sam is like, what the fuck is Lucifer's first? And the whole story is that God liked humans more than angels. Lucifer was like, hmm, and then decided to, you know, twist and tempt a human soul into the very first demon as a screw you to god and it's what he has done lilith is that first demon it is pretty fun do you think he did it when she was like a kid i mean could be could be he wants to eat babies (laughs) good for him honestly like (laughs) this is like such fun demon behavior so the Sam is like, oh my god, so if I kill her before the final seal, Lucifer's never gonna rise. What happens if Lilith gets killed before the 65th seal is broken? I don't know. Is it essential that she's the 66th seal? Probably. It's essential? So, like, if she gets killed one like seal before... Early. Yeah, it doesn't then. pass over to the being the final seal of Sproka. Well, if the apocalypse couldn't like start until 
the first seal. Like, like they didn't start counting seals until after Dean broke in hell, right? So yeah, I think this they is stop true. counting seals after Lilith dies. And if you didn't hit 66, then oh well, no apocalypse for you. So, like, it's like the righteous man breaks. That's the first seal, right? Yeah. And then the final seal is the first soul that broke must die. Pretty so, fun. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty fun. Wait, okay. They don't know about the empty yet. Like, what the fuck do they think happens when they kill a demon? Like, because it's different from exorcism, so they aren't going yeah. back to hell. Like, where are they going? Heaven? Like, clearly not. Like, what do they think is going to happen? I don't know. They just disappear into the void. Also, like, isn't it so sad that there's no rest in Supernatural? Mm. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've talked about this before, but I don't like the heaven and hell thing situation like in my personal life just because like mm. if i die, i want to just be dead like i just want to be yeah. asleep bro like why do you why do i have to continue existing and yeah yeah at least like in the empty they are asleep so mm. that is eternal sleep they're not being tortured or anything cast being awake there is a casting he's a specialist little princess that's why he's awake I thought they had, like, nightmares about their worst moments or whatever. No, Cass was given that because he refused to sleep. That doesn't seem like it would help you sleep. No, that's kind of like the empty's just mad at him at this point. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're gonna be awake? Fine. I'm gonna be a bitch about it. Every time I say bitch in a conversation that isn't cutting Supernatural directly, I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like so, like, I'm so edgy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and maybe i am oh, maybe you are but ruby has been able to track down one of lilith's closest member in her entourage her personal chef yeah sam is like oh my god what does lilith eat she literally told you baby blood all the time in 418 like were you not listening yeah i mean in that one he's like she's exaggerating to scare me. Mm. But no, she literally does eat that time. We cut to a hospital. There's two nurses talking. And one of them has a twisted and evil expression on her face the whole time or whatever. I did um, think to myself you- <laughs> yeah. that uh, the nurse that turned out that turns out to be a demon is like, oh, that's like terrible acting, I think. And then she turns out to be a demon. And it's like, oh my god, this is demon is so bad at acting. That's so fun. That's so fun. Uh, when the the when the other nurse was like, did you hear about the horrible thing? And she was like, no. No. I was like, <laughs> Girl, you're going to reverse the slay in a community theater. Like, honestly. <laughs> I think that's called a flop. But, okay, so the two nurses are talking and the human one is saying that there was this neonatal nurse at a nearby hospital who just stole two babies, um, but now says that she doesn't remember what happened at all. And the demon nurse is like, oh my god, that's crazy. Like, no one would hurt a baby. They're just so delicious. <laughs> and then Love her that. eyes go Love black. For her, honestly. For, like, literally no reason. Because usually when this happens, like, <laughs> yeah. In the in the show, it's because trying someone's to show trying someone. to communicate yeah. that they're a demon to someone else. But like, this is just like in case you like as a like a watcher didn't understand yet that this nurse with her like creepy smile calling babies delicious that we cut to right after Ruby said that Lilith's lieutenant is at like a hospital. Like just in <laughs> case you didn't know, like she's a demon. You know what? What's mm. happening here? This what? demon, she saw the um, production of Fleabag on a theater. Uh-huh. And she's yeah. like, I'm going to be just like that for real. <laughs> so throughout the day, she's doing like fourth wall breaks to be like, and I'm just like, I'm Fleabag. And this is one of those moments. That's real. I, I yeah. believe that. Back at the suite, Sam and Ruby are discussing their plan to get to this demon. Apparently, they're going to go find her at the graveyard shift tomorrow night. Uh, and that 
in order to kill Lilith, Lilith, Sam's gonna have to drink more demon blood than Ruby can give him right now. Also, at this point, Sam has, like, washed his face and shit, and he slicked back his hair yeah, to make him I look incredibly Lucifer. ugly. <laughs> yeah. This is his Lucifer in 503. I think that's not true. 504 is the end. Look. Yeah. Right. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, no. It's his evil hair look. Like, yeah. earlier when we were supposed to feel somewhat bad for him, like, his hair they was, put like... his hair down, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But now it's, like, prominent sideburns, everything slicked back. He looks terrible. Like, sorry, Sam. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Sam. Uh, yeah. But at this Sam's size, and Ruby's like, Sam, come on, it's okay. And Sam says, I know I need more. I get it. I know it's okay. Which is like a new a new progression for him. And I'm happy for him that he's at this place, but he will be torn away from that place very soon. Yeah. And he goes, I just I wish he'd trusted me, you know? And I just hope when all this is over, I hope we can fix things. Oh, Sam. I don't know about that one. It's not happening for a good few seasons and probably not even after that. You know, we've talked about this, but the only way that Sam and Dean can have a better relationship is to just, like, meet each other, like, I don't know, once every two months months or something. Yeah. Like, you need to meet maximum six times a year for this relationship to work, you know? And it's just, it makes me sad. Yeah. Get out of there, Sam. Yeah, they should not live together. The thing is, like, maybe if they were apart, they would have a better relationship. Except mm. because of fu- who Dean is fundamentally as a person, even yeah. the idea of being that apart is like, and you've thrown away the entire relationship. Like, he's yeah, never gonna welcome he is that. The, like, any, you're not rocking yeah. with me. I'm gonna kill I'm gonna myself. Kill my guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam should do it anyway just to see if Dean accepts it or kills himself <laughs> is that too much for the episode I mean I Sorry. don't disagree but I don't, don't a lot of people like weren't a lot of people upset at Dean's death because they viewed him as being passively suicidal and they were all projecting their depression on like Dean Winchester the 2020 all depression on Dean Winchester yeah uh. I think that's a different conversation, yeah? Fair. Okay. Well, Sam should should not rock with Dean. I mean, like, Sam being like, we shouldn't, we should probably, like, lead separate lives. It's a different thing from Cass dying, which is, like, what mm. uh, is the more immediate prompt of Dean's immense hopelessness at that point, you know? Yeah, but, like, at this point, I don't think Sam is aware that they have to only see each other six times a year. Yeah. For him, it's like... Let's go back to normal or whatever after the apocalypse. Oh, oh, that makes me sad because, like, there's been a lot of, like, I'll probably just die when I stop Lilith. But now, like, Ruby's given him a plan. And, like, he has some hope and stuff. And now he's like, maybe when this is over and Dean and I are both still alive, like, we can build a better relationship. Dean is, you know, driving off to wherever the fuck. And Bobby and him are talking on the phone. And Bobby is relaying information about, like, uh, which town is close to what and who are the car broke down, etc., etc. Dean has figured out where Sam is, pretty much. And then Bobby goes hey dean listen us finding sam it's got to be about getting him back not pushing him away too late for that honestly and yeah yeah. bobby goes i know you're mad dean i understand you got a right to be but i'm just saying be good to him anyway you gotta get true to him this is like last episode like towards the end of that episode i i talked about like Dean's perspective in the situation and what that means. And mm. this is what like what Bobby is saying here is like 
pretty much what I was trying to say there. That like, yeah, Dina's man. Uh, unlike Bobby, I don't think he has the right to be. But yeah. <laughs> he is man. So let's just, you know, let's facilitate the rest of the events from that point of view. Like, mm-hmm. what I was trying to say then was like, he's mad. He should be good to Sam anyway. Even if Sam did actually do something wrong. There is not mm. a version of this story where Sam is bad enough that they could do this to him and it would be completely fine. Right. So, yeah. And it's like, yeah, you're mad, but like, it's disproportionate. And also, there is no situation where it would be proportionate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, yeah. The problem here is that, I don't know, like, Bobby's definition of good, I think, is very different from, like, my definition. Yeah. I mean, again, he thought that locking Sam up was, like, because they loved him too much. Dean arrives at set where Sam is, and we have this uh, shot where, like, Dean is hiding behind a wall, and Sam is getting out of his room, and Dean, like, peeks over, blah, blah, blah. And then Dean goes into the room that Sam is in and Ruby is there packing up and yeah. Dean like immediately goes to attack her. Yep. With and the knife. With, he with doesn't the knife. even have any holy water on him or anything. Like he loses this fight. It's kind of embarrassing for him and he thinks he can kill Lilith. Like get real Dean. Sam comes in, disarms Dean and everything. His tone in this scene is well we've talked about it but well it truly is something and it is the tone pretty much that sam will carry for the rest of the show even he it's just defeated it's like no dean like just let her go just take it easy dean is mad i think he's also trying to like make his eyes wide in order to be like i'm being welcoming and I'm, yeah. like, open to discussion, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I feel like, I think it gets defeated later, but I think currently it is hopeful. No, 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 no. I don't, I suppose mm. I don't mean defeated in that he has given up on whatever. It's more of, like, I understand that the situation here is Dean is angry. Yeah, and it's, like, kind of just, like, trying to manage the situation now instead of, like, I don't know, being mad that this is the situation in the first place. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Dean, all of his lines, it was like shouty. But he goes like, oh, must have been Tom Hardy. (laughs) (laughs) Considering how hard you tried to keep me from catching it. But yeah. (laughs) Yep, exactly like that. Yeah, he goes, solid try, but here I am. And Sam goes, yeah, I'm glad you're here. (laughs) Which is truly a fucking thing. I don't know if it's funny. And he's doing the let's just talk about it. And Dean, every single time Sam suggests anything, let's talk about it. Like, we can go together, whatever. It's always like, yeah, as long as Ruby's dead, as long as Ruby's gone, like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Dean says she's poisoned, Sam. Look what she did to you. I mean, she up and vanishes weeks at a time, leaves you cracking out for another hit. And like, Dean actually doesn't have a point there pisses me off a little bit more even that it's like now the situation is like look she won't even give you your drugs <laughs> and, we just, and it's like you just you yeah you, didn't you wouldn't also, give him his like, drugs what's happening here but like what what dean is trying to say is like she's manipulating you and you're like fine with that mm. you know what i'm so mad about when what? sam goes you're wrong dean Dean goes, that's a lie, you're lying to yourself. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's a white line, Dean. Fuck you and your stupid ass hair. Dean is right that this is a manipulation tactic. It's mm. just that, well, rich coming from him kind of the yeah. situation. <laughs> yeah, it's also like the way that he's, like, he's been telling Sam for like a while that Ruby's manipulating him and this is something that he's been thinking all season, but I feel like I probably already said this, but it's the way that, like, she's manipulating you is a reason for him to be more angry at Sam, because it's like, you're too stupid to see that she's manipulating you, when it's actually like, well, it means that there were actions taken so that Sam would trust her more, so that, again, it should be something that makes you more sympathetic, not less. 
Dean goes, I just want you to be okay. You would do the same for me. You know you would. I just, like, do the same. Like, what is he even talking about? Like, killing Ruby? Like, you would kill, like... I want you to be okay, and once I kill Ruby, you'll just magically be okay again, and you two would kill my evil demon girlfriend if I had an evil demon girlfriend? Is that what he's saying? If Dean is working on the point p- point of view that Sam is being manipulated, th- the solution is not to go, come with me, or... The only option you have in life is to stay with the person manipulating you. Yeah. You cannot give those kinds of ultimatums. Because, well, one, it's not going to work. And two, like, if it works, great. If it doesn't, it will worsen the situation in all possible ways. Because now this person knows that you're not going to be there. And the only person in their life is going to be the person who is manipulating them. So what the fuck now? I don't know, just, I, I don't, Dean just is okay, blaming Sam for everything, and yeah. he's like, if Sam doesn't choose me, then like I don't care about him anymore. Dean understand that like there is manipulation happening here, but I don't mm. think he understands what the fuck manipulation is. Like, yeah. Do you think it's just like... I, I think he thinks it's just lying, so he's like, Sam's been manipulating me all of season four. Yeah, like he thinks it's just lying, and he thinks that if you say the truth, or like if you expose that someone is being manipulated, that's the end of be all of it. But like, Sam obviously doesn't think he is. Yeah. So like, there must be more to this conversation, and yet Dean the entire time is like, oh, either um, get out or be with her forever. And it's like, okay, so you're just leaving your brother to be manipulated for the rest of... Okay, great. It's like, You know, it sounds like you, you figure out where to get Lilith. Stay with us. We'll do this together. And Dean is like, that sounds great. As long as together it's you and me and not that demon bitch. Well, he doesn't say not that demon bitch. He says not that demon bitch. And yeah, you kiss her goodbye. We can go right now. Yeah, Sam says, I need her to help me kill Lilith. I know you can't wrap your head around it, but maybe one day you'll understand. Oh, mm. And he goes, I'm the only one who can do this, Dean. Dean's like, well, no, you're not. Sam says, what? The angels say it's you? Is that what's happening? And Dean is like, what? You don't think I can? <laughs> and this is the start of the part of the episode that's pretty much like, but mommy said. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And Sam said, no, mommy said you can. <laughs> You're not strong <laughs> enough. <sighs> Sam is saying, like, I'm being practical. I'm doing what needs to be done. Dean is like, no, you're not going to do anything. Is, like, why? Is, sh- I feel like Dean should mention first what Cass said about the amount of demon blood Sam needs to drink to defeat Lilith. He's going to change second, him like, forever. He yeah. already promised like he already gave himself up to the service of god and the angels or whatever like those all seem like relevant points like the to thing this is disagreement like sam is being practical if a yeah. little egotistic and dean is being so egotistic and not practical at all mm. like dean's offense here is that sam thinks he's not strong enough yeah and it's like well, you can say here that, well, it doesn't matter if I'm strong enough or not, because I already offered myself up for this. It's not mm-hmm. too late for you. That's like an argument. Right. Like, because it yeah. is too late for Dean. There's no going back for him. Mm-hmm. But like, Sam can still sit this one out just in case if it kills him, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I don't know, like, I think this is a very vital information you're missing, Dean. You can think of Dean as generously as you can. You can think that, like, he's doing this because he wants Sam to be safe. To not, you know. But the, the narrative only gives you hints of it. and only gives you what-ifs of that. So, yeah. yeah. Sam, Sam goes, stop bossing me around, Dean. And, like, this, you know, the lines sound like 
intense. But this entire time, he is speaking in a way that it's like, he is literally just trying to talk to Dean. Yeah. And he, he sounds pleading, I would say. Yeah. He says, my whole life, you take the wheel, you call the shots. I trust you because you're my brother. Now I'm asking you for once. Trust me. They always do this where it's like, you did this for me and now I'm doing it for you. I'm doing this for you because if it was me, you would do it for me. Uh-huh. It's like, both of them are so annoying. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, both of them are. Yeah. And Dean replies to this with, no, I don't think you know what you're doing. And Sam goes, no, yeah, I do. And go, Dean goes, then that's worse. Because then it's not something you're doing. It's what you are. What? Boo! That even... doesn't make any sense. Yeah. He's, I guess it's like, I don't think any human being would willingly make that choice. So therefore it means you're not human. Is, it, is this like a... You're doing a gay act and it's like, you don't know what you're doing. Yes, I do. That it's not just because you're doing something gay. You are gay. Like, what, yeah. what is like a, what is a real life parallel to this? I think like what you just said makes enough sense to me. Yeah. And I don't know, like, what the fuck does it even mean? No, okay. Maybe, maybe it's like, you don't know what you're doing. And Sam's like, yes, I, I do. do. And Dean then like, you sort are of a person ignores who that this. entirely. And he's like, you, yeah, no, I think it is the, I think, that you're a person that would do this means you're yeah. not human anymore. I think it's or, what, like the like, thing that you're doing changes what you are. Yeah, I think maybe this is Dean being like, you're being manipulated. And Sam is like, no, I'm not. And Dean is like, and then that's worse because you're just doing it out of your own volition. But it's still something that he's doing and it's not about who he is i don't know yeah it okay i mean this could be like a new statement though like sam's like trying to explain and dean's like okay what i said earlier about you i don't know, know what, what you you're are. doing like that's like bullshit like the real reason that i like have an issue with you right now is that i have an issue with what you are like it could be like a new idea <laughs> introduced it's a goalpost moving you know of like yeah. So this action that you're doing, you don't think is wrong. Well, who you are as a person fundamentally is wrong, you know. And it's like, okay, well, what else? But yeah, Dean cuts yeah. himself off. In fairness to him, <laughs> and then, and so I was like, no. And he still say says it. the whole "what you and are." Then, yeah. He just cuts himself off before he calls Sam a monster. A very low bar. Dean says it means you're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah yeah why not <laughs> he, he turned into a completely different person when he said it sam is just looking at this so sad so sad so sad and mm. like you know we did have that we did just have that fucking uh scene where he you know, thinks about this and Dean says this, you're a monster and mm. you mean nothing to me. And it's what you know, it's what Dean is saying now. So sorry, yeah. Sam. And yeah, he he's crying. He's tearing up. He's mm. crying. No no no. Dean is crying. Sam's also teary. Both of them are crying. <laughs> yeah. Sam looks at this and goes, Okay, okay, yep. And then he punches Dean. Yay! And literally, like... Kill him, dude. Sammy. Bite him. Bite the him other Sammy, way around. Him. Yeah. Literally bite him, yeah. Sammy. Kill him. Kill him. And then, yeah, Dean yeah. is on the floor. He gets up, punches back, and then they're in a full brawl. They're, yes. they're truly fighting. And um, I forget, but is this the first brawl? Like, is this the first, like, Sam and Dean are fighting this way and it's not because they're possessed and it's not because anything else yeah 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 yeah. this is like i'm pretty sure i think so too like but there's been like violence between them before but it's always been one-sided and by one-sided i mean it's always been dean hitting sam 
Yes. Yeah. But yeah, this is a real brawl. And I feel like like the the sudden punch from Sam in the face that starts this is like quite similar, I think, to like the punch that Dean throws, Dean throws. out of nowhere at Sam in Metamorphosis. No, I don't think so. Um and not like just in terms of like how it looks, like not in terms ah, okay. of like, not in terms of vibes. Like yeah, the yeah. context. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of how it looks, but like it's a different situation, I think, yeah. given there's a lot more provocation before it. And yeah. it's the fact that, like, I feel like this is, pro- I think this is the first time Sam has punched first and Dean responds the way that Sam has never responded when Dean punches first. Yeah. And then that is what turns it into a brawl. Once there's, like, an answering punch, like, that's when it is different from all their previous, yeah, like, encounters in this way. I mean, the difference here is that because the Dean punching Sam, I don't think it was a call to fight. It was yeah. like a, I'm punching you. And that's a different thing than a, let's yeah. punch each like, other. Yeah. Yeah. This one is very much a let's punch each other uh, fist. Yeah. You know? So, and they yeah. do. <laughs> they punch each other. And... <laughs> Oh my god, Sam is truly he is, really buff this season. He's so big. He is yeah. so big. He's ginormous. He's this dude's a fucking ginormous. And it was I don't know, I was a bit surprised because like he throws Dean around. I mean, there's no doubt in this scene. There, not a single moment was Dean having the upper hand. But mm. yeah. Stuff is breaking. There's like mirrors breaking. There's like um, the walls thing. They they're also yeah. break- you know it's just, the rooms. Sam's doing it, yeah, and they're all breaking because Sam has thrown Dean, Dean through the them. thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, finally Dean is on the ground, and um, you know he's like got a bit of a bloody nose. So what ifs? And mm. Sam is just above him like walking towards him like heaving and yeah his 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 jacket is slightly like it's not perfectly on him there's like a slight ajar situation it's not like off him or anything it's just mm-hmm. it's a bit um further out on his shoulders and it makes him look even bigger sam is like six four yeah Dude, both dean and sam are so tall dean is underground sam sees him and then starts strangling him. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> like uh, I don't. I don't think we need to put a "it's bad to murder your brother" disclaimers <laughs> here, because well, sometimes it's good to murder your him. brother. <laughs> and <laughs> this yeah. is one of these situations. Yeah, this is like if Abel woke up and I was like, "God, my head hurts." What the fuck yeah. is that? And then strangles <laughs> Kane. Like that's what's happening here <laughs> to me personally. So this is fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, but Sam stops, and I mean, I like. What are the reasons he stops? Well, that's the infertile. And like, no, no, Just, okay. Yeah. Let's let's change it, the question. Why is the reason he starts? He's angry. <laughs> He's angry. <laughs> I think a point of it a little bit is like, see, I can stop myself. I'm not a monster. I'm not going to kill you. Oh, interesting. So it's like, because like, if he just goes here now and then goes away, I don't think it sends the message as clearly. That, like, I stopped myself from killing you. Because, like, this brawl doesn't really have the intention of killing in mind yet, you know? But, like, huh. going down there and strangling Dean and being like, See, I have the ability to kill you. But I didn't! <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm not a monster. That's a crazy, crazy <laughs> logic to take. <laughs> but, like, it's what happened to me. Yeah. I, I love mean, it. that's pretty slay. I did not really see it. Like, I think I just saw it as, like, emotion He's getting angry. the best of Sam. And yeah. in that moment, he was like, I want to fucking kill that guy. And then when Dean started struggling more, he was like, oh, perhaps I should not fucking kill that guy. He doesn't. He stands up, you know, the cameras 
Well, we haven't even talked about the cameras in this scene. Um, I mm. really like the point when Sam and Dean were talking to each other, like still just talking. And yeah. uh, Sam's face is like just a normal, sh- normal framing. And Dean's face mm. is like, we look closer to his face and he looks a little bit more menacing. And I did find that mm. fascinating because it is very clearly made aware of by the camera that like Sam's the normal guy and Dean is like the a menacing creature in the situation. <laughs> and this one, Dean is on the floor and like the camera shot is like looking up to him. Which is well, yeah. And he yeah. goes, You don't know me. You never really? did. And you never will. Fuck yeah. And he never does. <laughs> He never does. I mean, I, this isn't like a win in Sam's mind, given that earlier he really did want to reconcile and make things good between them. Yeah. But like, pretty badass line. I mean, I know I purport to be the person who is seeing things from Dean's perspective in this uh, podcast. But like... You don't say that that often. I don't think you purport. Really? Well, um, I try to be because God knows you won't do it. But... <laughs> Uh, like in this scene, I literally do not give a shit about what how Dean receives this, you know. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> well, is he gonna receive this? Is like, no, Sam, no, Sam is wrong. Well, he's not wrong. I mean, Sam is right. <laughs> well, yeah, you should have realized it sooner. I don't know, buddy. So, like, I don't, I don't think there's any like interesting avenues to explore that aspect of this scene. But like, what Sam is thinking is like. On one hand, it's like relief, I suppose, that like this all this time, all my life, I've been trying to like tell this person who I am. I've been trying to express like who I am. I've been trying to share my reasonings and explain myself, all that crap. But you know what? He just never will. Like he doesn't know me. He never did. He never will. And a part of it is acceptance, and of course, a big part of it must be so horrible to think that yeah. a person who purports to be, I love to say that now, don't I? But a person <laughs> who purports to be the person who knows you the best in the world, and the only person who can know you and love you in this way. And, mm. you know, like, we know that Sam thinks highly of family as, like, the ultimate form of love. Mm. And Dean is his, pretty much his only family at this point. So Yerp. this this is one the only person who can care for him in this way. And he's never going to understand. And it's not even because Dean is just incapable of it. It's just there is a lack of trying, you know? And that must suck even yeah. more. That like, yeah. you never understood me and you never will. It's not a matter of something is fundamentally wrong with you the way you claim there's something fundamentally wrong with me. It's just Mm -hmm. because no matter what happens, you will just refuse to see me as a person worthy of being understood in this way. Yeah. Horrible. Uh, Oh, there's a web weave of Sam and Dean using lines from Charlie Bliss's threat, which are... Have you seen this one? It's the one that goes... Um, you love, you say you love me and it sounds like a threat. I'd rather be dead than have it be true that no one could ever love me more, love me more than you. Yeah. I yeah. the first time I saw that, I messaged you and was like, I'm so miserable. <laughs> <laughs> and I probably yeah, was. I think about it often. It's a, yeah. it's a good web weave. Though, I think that I read the, and you never will, as... I think that your interpretation of it is part of it. I think also part of it is, like, I'm removing myself from the room right now. I'm removing myself from our yeah, relationship Yeah, and you will never right know now. me like, anymore. Yeah. Yeah, because... I will not give you the like, opportunity. Like, we're, we're not seeing each other ever again. Like, you yeah. aren't... Yeah, you don't have the privilege of knowing me. No, but the thing after is... After this point. There was a time in this conversation where Sam goes, maybe you don't understand this now, but maybe one yeah. day you will. And Dean yeah. can still do that even if Sam is not there, even if they don't speak to each other ever again. Dean, with his own self and his own mind and his own thoughts, can come to conclusions about this story in a way that is mm. like 
yes, I was right, and I did fuck up that one massively. And mm-hmm. I think Sam is saying here is, is like, whether I leave or I stay, like, you trying to understand me and you understanding me and you knowing me, it's not reliant on me anymore. It's on you, and whatever you do, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Is anybody else so miserable? <laughs> mm, I mean, Sam is. I mean, that's the, the, the thing about, like, any relationship, really, is that mm. the moment it's like, I'm the only one who can understand you, it's, it's bad. Like, there's a difference between I understand you best or I know you best. Because I feel like that is something that can happen. But mm. best is not equivalent to I know you wholly. And exclusively. And also exclusively. Dean claims to be like the, the knower and understander of Sam wholly and mm. exclusively. And it's like, yeah, the moment you... <laughs> The moment, like, I feel like a relationship starts doing that, especially family, especially in family, because mm. I'm sure many people also have heard, like, oh, family is the only one who can understand you. Yeah. Or, family is the only one who will know you like this or accept you like this or whatever. Yeah, and, or that you, know, you can trust or that you can yeah, turn to when to, you need yeah. help or blah, 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 blah. And, well... I think your family should be your number one area where you turn to when things go bad or something. Should be, not not like is. But it shouldn't be the only. Once that word starts creeping up in there. Yeah. And for Sam and Dean, there's no even creeping up even. It's just there, always. Mm. Horrible. Well, yeah. Yeah, Sam starts walking away. And Dean goes... He's still on the floor. He goes, you walk out that door. Don't you ever come back. <laughs> and then... Like, I know it's meant to be. It is something. But, like... I, I don't... Like, have you seen the video of this fight? That, like, someone put on Tumblr and they were like... Hey, just, like, watch this out of context. Like, and if you're not a Supernatural fan, like, can tell me, like... Does this like is this like emotional to you or like funny? And everyone put like funny, <laughs> <laughs> and like <laughs> I think that the way it's because of the way Dean delivers it, like it's just it's laughable. It's funny to me. I know I put voices on in this podcast, but how I did it is exactly how he does it. Like I swear to God, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a perfect rendition of that that it was. delivery. <laughs> so. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Like, he should have yeah, done it like, in I know it's because you were like almost strangled to death. What? <laughs> he should have done it in the accent I was doing it earlier. <laughs> Which accent? <laughs> You're a monster. <laughs> you walk out that door. Don't you ever come back? <laughs> he should have said that. Yeah, no. Sam would have just stopped in shock and turned around. <laughs> You would have been like, did I cut off oxygen supply to your brain? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, okay, obviously, this is a reference to the Stanford fight. Yeah. And Dean is casting himself as John, John in that situation. And, like, to make it clear that this is, like, a fully end of relationship thing. Sam walks out that fucking door. Go, baby girl. Sometimes I think to myself, I wish there was just something, something that actually affected Dean long term, you know? Like, sometimes I think, like, here, it's like, Dean is like, you walk out that door, don't you ever come back. And he thinks he's in the right. He does. Yes. And then the narrative proves that he is in the right. Yeah. And then, um, like, they'd still separate in season five, so... Oh. And even that one, it's like, I think his perspective is like, I mean, I was doing the right thing then, and now uh, I'm doing the right thing to, to call you back. Yeah, and, like, I'm, yeah, this is, it's really good of me to, like, be the bigger person and call you back despite how badly you wronged me. Like, sometimes you just have to be 
punished by life, you know, to realize that like, mm. okay, that was like a bad thing I did. <laughs> and I probably shouldn't do it again. And the thing about Dean is like, he never, like bad things happen to him, but there's always somebody else to blame or mm. there's always something else to blame or he is made out to be, actually he's the person who's in the right it's just the circumstances yeah. or whatever. The The blame is always offloaded from Dean. And I'm not saying that we should blame Dean for everything. Although, I don't know. <laughs> maybe well, we should. I don't know. I'm not claiming it. But, like, maybe. <laughs> but I'm just saying that having something in your life go wrong fully because mm-hmm. it's your fault could be in some situations, if it is something you're able to recover from, really helpful in, like, your future decision making. Yeah. Or do you just realize that his actions were wrong Have consequences. regardless of Yeah. Like like even though like he's right about like how blah 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 like yeah. Sam eventually like raises Lucifer, like he still should not have done any of that shit. And also, yeah. he's still trying to kill Lilith. Like, if yeah. he successfully killed Lilith and followed the angel's plans, the same thing would have happened. But, like, that just doesn't seem to get through his head in future seasons, I'm pretty sure. I don't think he thinks of things in actions. He thinks of them in outcomes. The outcomes always rewards him. And because of that that thought process of outcome versus uh, action... He also doesn't look at the merit of the actual action. I think maybe even disconnects the consequences from the action itself. The thing about Dean is like, he thinks something is deeply wrong with him. I mean, we've talked about this before. (laughs) Something is deeply wrong with him, but he does nothing to fix it. And a part of it is that he thinks he could do no wrong also. (laughs) Like, if he does something wrong, he was right to do it. Kind of situation. (laughs) And, yeah, horrible. Like, sometimes you're a terrible person. And that's fine. And Dean, like, always thinks of it as, like, he is a terrible person. And it's not fine, but, like, it's who I am. And it's like, Jesus Christ, well, what elves? What elves? No, what else? Because I we will continue watching this show for, like, five hours. (laughs) And it will carry it with us, too, for that long but I don't know. We sure will. Yeah. And what really, really annoys me is that the last shot of the episode is, is like Dean? on Dean, like on the floor. And like the point is like, oh, isn't it so sad that Sam beat him to a pulp and now he's like on the floor injured like that? Like, no, Sam should have killed him. Like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Dean doesn't really ever get a redemption arc. I feel like for Hmm. anything and the reason why is the narrative doesn't deem his actions worthy enough of being of needing a redemption Mm. I believe and also like like you need to acknowledge fault to redeem yourself I feel like and again narrative never does it and this is part of it also like even here in this scene, it's like... I mean, they do they do frame this scene as like, Dean went too far. Right. But he's right to think the things he's thinking, but it's too far. <laughs> he wasn't being yeah. polite enough about it. Yeah, he just... Like, like, Bobby's like, you have to be good to him. And it's not... It doesn't mean consider his point of view. It doesn't mean... Yeah. Try to actually connect with him as a person. It doesn't mean... Treat him like a human being. It just means be nice to him so he'll agree with you. Like, dude. Yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, what well, do you anyway. think about this episode? Um, I mean, there were ways in which it was very good and there were ways in which it was it is very truly bad. Horrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like this episode. I was afraid to talk about it in the podcast because I was really emotional watching it. I don't know. I feel like in the podcast, I already talked so much about myself. I was afraid I was going to bring up things about myself too. But like, I think I think talking about it did help me and like trying to see it in a less like 
emotional POV and in more of a like okay so like what like what are the actions trying to tell us I do think that between the duo us I tend to be the one who's more generous with like what Supernatural is trying to say um, mm -hmm. yeah. and this one like when you're just watching it there is a tendency to be like more generous with it because like it is an emotional episode and they do try to make you feel for Sam yeah. it's just that once you start breaking down what the fuck they're actually trying to do it's like oh yeah no it's still a terrible show it's, it's still terrible don't worry about it <laughs> Yeah. yeah suppose so okay so um okay so before we move on to best line worst line we realized during the recording that like like we keep saying Misha calls is a horrible person recently but like we haven't we haven't said why and I think it's just because we assumed everyone knew but like yeah. basically what we're referring to is a few months ago he wrote this Substack article about Israel's genocide of Palestinians, but it was, like, very, like, both sides. My heart yeah. breaks for both sides. It utilized a lot of, like, Israeli propaganda about the yeah. founding of Israel. Um, oh, and then when people... Yeah? Like, what's particularly egregious about it is he paints it not as a, an emotional call to action. It's mm -hmm. like, Oh, I researched it, you guys. And like yeah. I read about it. And don't worry, like I know what I'm talking about because I know the history now, because I looked into it. And it's like, okay, well, a uh, fuck you do. Like, why why have you cast yourself as an educator on this? And also why are all of your takes so rancid? Yeah. Um, but yeah, after he was criticized for it on Twitter, he just doubled down. He kept saying that he didn't want to call it a genocide because he feels like it devalues like actual genocides like the Holocaust <sighs> or attempted genocides like indigenous people in North America. Which wow, what a what an interesting way to word that, Misha Collins. But anyway, yeah. so like that that is the situation. Um, and um, secondly, yeah, like while we're on this topic, um, we're going to add links in the description of this episode, um, to donate to the, um, PCRF, the Palestine's Children Relief Fund. Um, the World Food Program, and then Gray. Do you want to introduce? Yeah. Oh. Uh, um, okay. Wait. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I also have to say Eason. Sorry. Um. So. Uh. And now that we're, now that we're on this topic, um, we're putting links in the description of this episode to the Palestine Children's Relief Fund, the World Food Program, um, buying Eason's for Gaza. Yeah. So. I, I guess it's best time, best line, worst line. I mean, there are a lot of good lines. I was, I think I was very taken by Mary's for justice. Even if they don't do yeah. too much with the, this episode, I think it's the line that made me feel the most. Uh, I, I never really understood why I felt so emotional watching that scene. But when you explained mm. it as like, Sam thinks of himself as a Winchester and that he is like this because he is a Winchester. But here's yeah. Mary coming here and being like, that Winchester curse you're talking about, like, that comes from me and also it doesn't have to be a curse. Right. And, yeah. And when you, when you were like, there are people, like, you think of family as the main dictator of morality and the family you're with right now thinks you're evil. And the dad who raised you thinks you're evil. But yes. I don't think so. And I'm your family. And we come from a long yeah. line of hunters who are all family, who all don't think so. And yeah. like, yeah, that I think that means something to me. And I think it means something to Sam, who yes. like does value that perspective. Um, for my best line, I quite like the line um i don't know suck dirt and die rufus <laughs> i don't know <laughs> I mean, what, what is the best line in this episode i i, I suppose 
I the the parts that I like I didn't really think of in terms of lines. I have really liked the whole cutting out from Dean hallucination to reveal that it's a hallucination. That's not a right. line, but that is the part of the episode that really got to me the most. Ah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I'll I'll choose that. It's my honorary okay. best line. Worst line Worst for me line. is you're so far away from strong. Try weak. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. No, that's pretty funny. That's pretty clunky writing. Um, I I think that Anna showing off and being like, oh my god, you let Sam Winchester out? He was drinking demon blood. It's so much worse than we thought. Dean was trying to stop him. Was just very wooden and very dumb and just not good. Like, the only purpose of it is, like, maybe to make it clear that the angels didn't know the details. Like, that's the only new information we get. The rest is just, like, a shoddy summary Yeah. that, like, adds nothing to Anna's character or Cass's character or the plot. Um, spread those sheets? Oh my god, you're right! We will spread those sheets. Misogyny. Ruby gets called a bitch quite a bit. Yeah, I I think we can count one in there. Yeah, I think that's a one. Racism. No. Not Homophobia. That Not that I recall. There is so many... Th- this episode is so <laughs> egregious, and it gets a one. Yeah, we just don't have an ableism <laughs> column, because... We decided we, we against, decided it, against right? it, yeah. Because we were like, I don't uh, think that we're the people who can give number of points to ableism. This is so. This is but like this would our, be a five. Our misogyny, racism, homophobia tally is such a like big proof of like how if you do your criteria strategically, you can do anything. <laughs> Like, uh-huh. Like because our criteria is misogyny, racism, homophobia. Like there are some yeah. truly egregious episodes. No, Sarah in Gamble this season. traveled forward in time, saw our spreadsheet, and was like, I've got the funniest idea, you guys. Yeah, exactly. And it's like remember when we were like doing like a Sam and Dean uh misogyny uh-huh. count. So yeah, when there was other misogyny, it's like, well, Sam and Dean didn't enact it. Guess there's nothing we can do. Yeah. And like we very quickly realized that like this show is so egregiously bad in ways <laughs> that we we did not anticipate. All right. Well, yeah. Um Well our next oh, one well. is The IMDB. I am DB. This episode this is gonna be, be high. a polarizing maybe. episode, but I feel like it's high. Yeah, I think maybe you know last episode I guess with nine point one. Mm. I think I'm going to, and it wasn't the nine point one. It was like an eight point mm-hmm. seven. I'm gonna yeah, guess a nine point zero for this one. Okay, do I want to go above or below that? I'm gonna go above and then regret it. Okay. One. Okay, here we go. It is holy shit, it's eight point five. Okay, did people take issue with the things we took issue with? Or I mean, okay. Is is there something else going on? Are they like I don't think Dean would be that mean? Like, okay, well, let's see. It's only nine reviews. People like it in the reviews. In the reviews. This person says every episode of Supernatural has been good so far. <laughs> Not sure about that one. This one, it says, I have a problem with season four. If I have a problem with season four, it's this weird obsession with torture this season. Suddenly developed mm. and it is most prevalent here because that Alistair hallucination was totally out of place. That's true. Like, what was the point of that one? Yeah, and like, Sam isn't even like... Like he wasn't is tortured by Alistair. To, they don't have a bond. Is it supposed to represent you know? Sam's fears of going to hell? I mean, maybe. 
That would be but, interesting, I think, if they did anything about it. I mean, also, like, they don't have a bond. Did Alistair and Sam even talk, like, other than Sam kicking mm-hmm. his ass? Yeah, I think Sam just killed that guy and that was it. But the most heartbreaking scene was when Imaginary Dean told Sam he is a monster while the real one was upstairs saying he would die for his brother in a second. Well, uh, five minutes later, guess what Dean does? <laughs> Dean does call him a monster, like, for real. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? They do say, Dean, you punched Sam so many times before and he just stood there and took it like a man. Why didn't you do the same? <laughs> Real <laughs> Sender take it like a man, dude. <laughs> I agree with the 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 actions prescribed, but not the ways they were prescribed. Hmm. This person thinks that the that this episode has a lower rating because it's slower burn and less action centric. Which that's- I don't know, do you think that's why? I guess some, if you don't true. care about Sam that much, you would be pretty bored during the hallucinations, I suppose. Oh my god. Cubs and culture, I wish. Uh, they said, I think it is exceedingly likely that one of the Winchesters will kill the other in the series finale. Yeah. That could be fun. Sad that it doesn't happen. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Anyway. Well. That's it for this episode of Busted Asian Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing Season 4, Episode 22, Lucifer Rising. Leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasties. Um, follow us on social media. We are on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com with official tag babpod, B-A-B-pod. Thanks to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyasianbeautiespod. Um, that's where our outtakes live. Also, like, if you have some spare money this week, like, probably give it to one of the links in our description of this episode instead. Yeah. Um, check out our merch at babpaw.redbubble.com, but not this week, a different week. <laughs> Again, links in the <laughs> description <laughs> instead. Um, and also we have a Q&A, and you can send in your questions using the tumblr or our email which gray will tell you um before january 27th midnight eastern yeah. time 2024 and, and that email is at gmail.com see you guys next time bye